This program is brought to you by the Genesis Communications Network, a world leader in talk radio since 1998. Visit GCNlive.com today. Paracast, the gold standard of paranormal radio. And now, here's Gene Steinberg. I have to tell you that after getting last week's psychic reading from Cynthia Hart Button, I don't think I've given it a lot of thought because I've had readings before. I think some were better than others, but I've only had one reading of anything in my entire life where I thought maybe something was accurate. Did I ever mention this on the show? Yeah, you did. This is the one years ago, if our listeners haven't heard, where I was involved in a business venture, it wasn't working, looking to start a new life. My first marriage had broken up. So I visited a friend in Philadelphia who's a pagan, and she took out her tarot cards She takes out her tarot cards, and there's one that signifies you're plying your trade. And I'm not much on tarot cards. But that's what she pointed to me. And I had developed a sort of profession while working in this business. I became a typesetter. And part of the reason for that is I was editing a magazine. And I wanted it to look professional and found out that a local school system had a typesetting machine. So I faked my way into it, and I taught myself. So... Armed with that, I had to think what to do next. But before that even happened, once she finished her reading, I promptly became exhausted and fell asleep for two hours. Did I mention that, Chris? I don't recall that particular detail. Okay. She said, of course, that she, I guess, was using my energy to come up with her reading. Anyway, I got up, went home. A few months later, I had moved to the vicinity of New York City, actually in New Jersey, a quick commute. I started getting gigs in the typesetting business and I supported myself that way for nearly 20 years. But somewhere along the line, of course, Apple came out with a Macintosh computer about halfway into that, developed desktop publishing and ultimately destroyed the typesetting profession. So I had to learn how to do desktop publishing. But that's the only reading that sort of at least guided me to doing something valuable and something that was productive. The other couple of readings I've had have all been just very general or completely inaccurate. Or in the case of Cynthia Hart Button, it seemed to look backwards rather than forwards. And I explained that on the After the Powercast podcast. And I as soon as not prefer not to mention it again. But she was a nice lady and she believes in good things. And saving our environment and saving endangered species is a good thing. Has she ever done a psychic reading for you, Chris? No. No, in fact, I kind of forgot that she professed to have those kinds of abilities. Again, I really don't know Cynthia that well. Um, uh, She's so busy. I really haven't had the the chance to to spend a lot of quality time with her because she's she's just a mad woman on the move. Um, Her husband, Charles, uh, is a bass player who I've... I've been involved in a number of projects with, and and I know Charles much, much better than Cynthia. But the reason why I even uh, wanted to suggest her uh, being a guest on the show is because of her work with um, the White Buffalo um, and also her work with Native Americans and, of course, with the the Standing Rock uh, controversy and I think a little heightened uh, awareness in this country of uh, Native American rights and their kind of the custodial ship, I think, of the environment uh, goes back, you know, into prehistory. And and I thought that this would be a good opportunity to um, to kind of at least broach those kinds of subjects on the show. Um, you know, again, I'm I'm pretty agnostic when it comes to uh, to, you know, living here in Sedona, <clears throat> you know, psychics are a dime a dozen. And, and I really don't pay much attention to that sort of thing. But but uh, I do take exception with some of our uh, forum posters who think I'm uh, I've lost my rocker to have someone like her on the show and all this, uh, you know, um, 
if this was after the Paracast, I'd tell you where to go stick it. But um, I really do feel that there's um, room on the show uh, to talk about prophecy, to talk about Native American rights, to talk about the uh, environment, and uh, and to bring to bring up subjects that have to do with. Uh, with what many Native peoples think is the end of this particular <laughs> incarnation of humanity. And um, I, I do feel that there's something to that. Of course, I don't buy into any of it, uh, really. I don't believe anything uh, when it comes to this. But I, I do kind of have a sense that we are <laughs> getting to the to the end of an epoch here. Uh, things are getting um, uh, uh, curiouser and curiouser and a lot more uh, interesting than than I care to really uh, buy into, but you know I do think it's uh, it's important for the Paracast to uh, to broach these subjects from time to time. And the plight of Native Americans, of course, is something the mainstream media never really covers. By the way, and I was looking at the stats here, and the U.S. population of American Indians and Alaska Natives totals six point six million, including those who are just part Native American about 2% of the total population. But I think they deserve some attention other than maybe being treated as an afterthought on a TV show or something. I know there's a one TV procedural on Netflix called Longmire, which is based on mystery novels about a Wyoming sheriff. And Native Americans are very, very strongly represented there, at least in terms of the plotting. I don't know about the people who actually play the roles. Yeah, yeah, they are. Uh, they're Native American, except for Lou Diamond Phillips. He's, <laughs> I don't think he's Native, but... He's he got a fraction, them. like one-eighth Native American. Lou Diamond yeah. Phillips, of course, he was in the movie La Bama many years ago and has become a fairly busy working character actor. But yeah, if you look up his bio, he's one-eighth Native American. Okay, well, I guess that rates. By the way, it's a pretty decent show. It's not a kid show. It's something that actually was on regular cable TV and I guess they didn't renew it but it, yeah, it can be yeah. it can be a pretty gritty show but I really like it yeah it's been on five seasons uh, it's season number six now yeah uh huh and the guy who plays the Sheriff Longmire is actually an Australian actor who has the same name as an American actor who's no longer with us Robert Taylor right very prominent. I didn't know he was Australian. Yes, he is. Hmm. Well, you can't tell anymore because you have these people from Australia, New Zealand, UK, and they come here and you don't know that they're not American. But he's a really good actor and the show has a lot of grit to it. You yeah. know, it's, it's not light and airy. Graham Greene plays a, uh, a bad guy. Graham Greene, of course, has always played kind of, you know, sort of whimsical, sort of funny Native American characters. Of course, his, uh, his character in uh, Dances with Wolves is a classic. You know? But he plays like a, uh, <laughs> like a, uh, a pretty nasty uh, casino, Indian casino um, guy and sort of pseudo drug dealer. And it, it, it's got interesting plot lines. It's, it shows, uh, the difficulty that some counties who uh, who are in close proximity to Native American reservations, the kind of uh, legal problems that you have uh, doing criminal investigations, chasing people from the res onto the res. And it, it's it, it's interesting. I've seen all the shows. I, I actually quite enjoy it. Um, it's one of the few serial shows that I've watched. And the show is a mixture of serialized drama and resolving the plot in an episode or two and as he says i think it's a really good show i really enjoy it my wife was slow to get used to it but has become accustomed to the fact that it's just really well done in terms of plotting it's based on a series of novels by craig johnson who is someone who lives in wyoming in a town of 15 people imagine that in any case on this episode we're not talking about tv procedurals native americans or anything like that. We're going to talk about a movement called Anonymous Uprising to fund an attempt at first contact. And they're trying to raise funds at GoFundMe to resolve it. Right now, I'm at mixed feelings about what this is going to lead to, but we're going to figure it out. 
Anonymous Uprising, First Contact, with Gene and Chris, you're in the Bearcast. <laughs> Neighbors, I want to tell you about my favorite graphics app. It's the award-winning Graphic Converter. You know, Graphic Converter is the universal genius for photo editing on your Mac. Join over one and a half million loyal users for this Swiss Army Knife photo editing app. It gives you all you expect from a top-flight image editing app with tons of features. And most important, it's easy to use. It's also far less expensive than that other app that you can only get by subscription. You know, the one I'm talking about. What's more, you can get 20% off with your order right now. So write this down to learn about Graphic Converter. Go to www.lemkesoft.de slash gene. Let me spell that www.lemkesoft.de slash gene. All right, guys. We're ready for our Four Seasons sunroom, and Daddy's going to get a rec room with refreshments. Oh, no. We'll be sleeping under the stars. Mom, what about the one with, you know, the fun? Nice try, little bro. It's a gym. My gym. Hey, Grandma's getting her Four Seasons garden room. Weather tight and still like being outdoors. Maybe a living room. Oh, no. Wait. A family hub. Yeah. Yeah. No matter what the budget, the season, or the climate, Four Seasons Sunrooms let you and your family enjoy the outdoors inside. Call now to hear more about these great offers from the premier manufacturer of sunrooms since 1975. More reasons for Four Seasons Now. To find out more, call toll-free 800-848-6333. That's 800-848-6333. Lifetime Gray's 100% grass-fed beef has the health benefits you seek. When compared to conventional beef, it offers good fats while virtually eliminating the bad. That's the result of cattle who never eat grain, ever. Rich in antioxidants, including vitamin E, C, beta-carotene, and CLA. No artificial hormones, antibiotics, or other drugs. For all our fresh, non-cooked products with only 100% grass-fed beef, go to MidasResources.com. Use voucher code GCN to get 30% off your order. MidasResources.com or find us on Facebook. Are you happy washing your hands with harsh chemicals? Are you happy doing laundry with detergents? Are you happy paying high prices? Find your happiness with Pure Soap. These all-natural, earth-friendly Pure Soaps are the very best you've ever used. Buy in bulk. Get a 12, 36, or 48-month supply. Or get items individually and still save big. You're getting soap products twice as good as what you're using now. Earth-friendly and natural soaps. Your family deserves the best. Happiness is 5starsoap.com. Why not put your money up the drain for a change? See them at 5starsoap.com or call 1-800-340-7091 for a catalog. Cal Bend Soap Company can save you thousands of dollars and give you good old-fashioned real soaps that are triple concentrated. Soaps made from vegetable and coconut oils. See their full selection of soaps at 5starsoap.com. That's F-I-V-E starsoap.com. Or call 1-800-340-7091 for a catalog. This is Dan Pillett. Do you owe the IRS money you can't pay? Are tax debts crippling you? I've defended people from the IRS for over 30 years. I've helped thousands and I can help you too. I wrote the book on IRS settlement and I'm telling you, there's no such thing as a hopeless case. Call 800-34-NO-TAX to finally get free of IRS debt. With the IRS's new programs, there's never been a better time to solve your problem. Call 800-34-NO-TAX. That's 800-34-NO-TAX or my website, danpilla.com. We'd like to hear from you. If you have a comment or question about the Paracast, send it to news at theparacast.com. That's news at theparacast.com. And don't forget to visit our famous Paracast community forums at forum.theparacast.com. So we're joined on the Paracast this week by Sean Correa, and he is the driving force behind Anonymous Uprising, which is the movement towards first contact. Now, Sean, before we go on, I wanted to ask you, first of all, about your background, kind of look at your path here. 
What sort of businesses have you been in and what led you to the crazy UFO field? Sure. So, you know, I started uh, my combat training actually when I was five years old. My uh, my mother was a, a diplomat. My father was in the export business. And um, I my instructor was actually in charge of the uh, uh, secret security force in Korea. And, you know, so I'd be, uh, I was been a martial artist for 15, 20 years and an athlete. And that drew the attention of recruiters and folks in the national security uh, business. And I uh, actually, as I was going through college, I uh, focused on uh, developing my skills in various computer sciences and engineering. And so I was intrigued and working in national security, but I wanted to uh, take a shot at building a career in the information technology arena. So I did that. And I've had a number of entrepreneurial endeavors in that field, uh, in the areas of online training and the areas of, of cyber defense. And so I've had a, a business career that paralleled to my career and work in the national security field, mostly for uh, the Department of Defense Cybersecurity Center, the DC-3. Uh, I've also been a technical liaison for DARPA and IARPA, which is, uh, uh, your audience may or may not know, DARPA uh, looks for uh, new technology for uh, military applications. IARPA is DARPA's counterpart in the intelligence community. So my, I've spent my life um, developing new technologies to help our national defense and funded a lot of those endeavors through commercial, my commercial exploits and taking highly disruptive technologies to market. Some of the neat technologies you see on the market today, like HBO Go was ours, Bill Me Later. We actually worked very closely with Tesla, Fisker Automotive, and in the alternative energy space on the commercial side. So that's kind of, I've been in this area a long time. Now, through that process, I've been exposed to a number of the uh, projects and had, uh, you know, been exposed to a lot of the technologies that, that have been leveraged and reverse engineered for uh, initially military applications, but they do eventually, uh, they're eventually made av available to private companies so they can, you know, be available for public consumption. So that's kind of my, my background. Now, what, what moved me towards this particular subject matter is I started to notice there was uh, the, the public interest here was just growing exponentially. It used to be, you know, very segmented, had a pretty, you know, a specific demographic of the people that followed this stuff. And I, I started to see with a lot of television shows on television, like the History Channel and so forth and so on. And uh, that got me interested in wanting to reach out and uh, help um, a lot of the ufologists and subject matter experts out there. So. I reached out. I've worked with some some of the most famous um, ufologists, and what I learned was I I really got into the material. I got a really good idea for uh, you know what was being circulated, the narratives, conspiracy theories, and so forth and so on, and just comparing that what was on the public domain to my own experiences. And initially, I got involved trying to help uh, provide some expertise. Uh, a lot of the UFO, you know, ufologists don't necessarily come from the same background and don't understand the intricacies. They're really just talking to people, trying to cultivate uh, witnesses and so forth and so on. So I tried to bring some of that expertise to bear to try to help make more progress now. Uh, and what I learned was um, most of the ufologists examine cases, interview witnesses, um, from instances in the past, I, there was zero um, primary research being done. And I understand why, you know, it's difficult to do this work uh, without funding and to seek funding. You need to have a narrative that draws the public interest so you can sell videos and tickets to speeches and all that kind of stuff. But in large part, what I found is the interest and objectives of most of these ufologists wasn't necessarily to move the ball forward, was to just arouse the public interest, which is, is a good thing. I mean, that, that, that certainly helps and that, that's, that's a great idea, but it's not really helping to, to move this forward. And so that's kind of how the idea started. So I, I took a bunch of my colleagues, worked with my colleagues, we got together. A lot of them have contributed to a lot of these ufologists. So 
um, most of the information that's available on the public domain that's true, that's factual, usually comes from someone like myself or my colleagues um, who work in this field. Folks like us that kind of guide this, uh, guide the uh, ufologists along in terms of how, you know, what's what. Unfortunately, a lot of the uh, the facts that are available are not as appealing is the narrative that's created by this by the ufologist to try to explain these things so before we go on before we go on sean i wanted to ask you specifically you mentioned working with certain ufologists which ones can you name a few let's kind of set it on the table here sure um i one that i worked with i worked with dr stephen greer who is uh the uh, founder of uh uh, the Disclosure Project. Yeah, we and, know who he is, and I can understand after working with him, you might be discouraged. Go on, please. Right. So, you know, like I said, I, I don't really have, you know, I don't want to say anything negative about anybody, but, you know, um, clearly they're doing some public service by arousing the interest of the public, but I'm I'm just personally not interested in in selling books and videos and in t-shirts and stuff like that being cults Um, of personalities (laughs) right it just i just in in terms of you know yeah one of the one of the things that i noticed you know what he does or what i've what i've observed and and is what you know when you you go to hawaii you can pay a tour guide uh in the springtime who'll take you out and so that you can take pictures of and see humpback whales in person. It's a great thing. People enjoy it. It's a life-changing experience. After the tour, they go home. You know, they have a great story to tell their family. That's very much what I observed with a lot of the CE5 contact expeditions. Um, People were going out and, you know, they observe uh, an extraterrestrial orb will appear in the sky, maybe 15, 20 minutes. It's exciting. I, I get it. You know, you kind of that curiosity. And then when it's satisfied and you recognize that this is real, uh, it's a very exciting experience. But that's really where it stops. So it's, he's more of a tour guide, in my view, based on the work he's doing than someone who's trying to develop. Well, well, wait a minute. Hold uh, on. Communication. He's, he's, he's the unelected uh, humankind's unelected ambassador to the universe. I mean, how dare you? <laughs> Let's break here and then we'll continue that discussion because that raises a lot of interesting possibilities. Dr. Stephen Greer, he was on the Paracast twice in the early years. And I should say this on the second occasion, it sounded to me like he was going to just go off on us because he was really getting very (laughs) upset. Possibly. We'll get into that in a moment. We've got (laughs) Sean Correa. Anonymous Uprising is his endeavor. More to come with Gene and Chris. You're in the Paracast. for listening to GCN. Visit GCNlive.com today. Paid non-attorney spokesperson Adam Pulaski of the Pulaski Law Firm with principal office in Houston, Texas is the attorney responsible for the content of this ad. This ad is not legal advice and the choice of a lawyer should not be based solely upon advertisement. Services may not be available in all states. Attention Zarelto users. If you or a loved one took Zarelto and suffered a serious bleeding event, you may be entitled to financial compensation. Zarelto is a popular prescription blood thinner used to prevent blood clots and protect patients from strokes. These serious bleeding events have led to numerous cases of hospitalization and even death. Phone lines are open 24-7. Call 800-261-0937. That's 800-261-0937. Looking for that edge during those intimate moments? We see many ads for enhancement, but the side effects include death. At GCN Team, we should change the Healthy Body Brain and Heart Pack to the Healthy Libido Pack. The brain and heart are not the only organs that require a healthy vascular system. For proper blood flow at the right moment, go to GCNTeam.com or call 877-878-4203. That's 877-878-4203. That's 877-878-4203. Paid non-attorney spokesperson. Injury Help Desk is responsible for this advertisement. Principal Office, Las Vegas, Nevada. This ad is not legal advice, and the choice of a lawyer should not be based solely upon advertisement. Services may not be available in all states. Attention heartburn drug users. If you or a loved one has taken Nexium, Prevacid, or Prilosec to treat heartburn, acid reflux, or indigestion, and suffered serious kidney damage, chronic kidney disease, or kidney failure, you may be entitled to substantial financial compensation. Studies from the JAMA Internal Medicine indicate a significant increased risk of acute and chronic kidney disease from taking proton pump inhibitors. 
inhibitors. If you or a loved one was diagnosed with kidney failure or chronic kidney disease after taking Nexium, Prevacid, or Prilosec to treat heartburn, acid reflux, or indigestion, you may be entitled to substantial financial compensation. Act now. Time is limited to file a claim. For a free consultation and free information, call Injury Help Desk now. You may be entitled to substantial financial compensation. Call 800-225-8944. That's 800-225-8944. Again, 800-225-8944. Call now. Hi, Peter Vaccaro for ParanormalDate.com. Are you looking for love in all the wrong places? Now you have a chance to change that by signing up for free at ParanormalDate.com. This incredible dating site puts people of like minds together. People who are interested in the strange, the unusual, mysteries, ghosts, UFOs, and the afterlife, and so much more. ParanormalDate.com was developed for you. People seeking a viable alternative to the other dating services. You can join for free by going to ParanormalDate.com. And if you decide you like it and want to connect with people, use the code GEORGE for a substantial discount. Mark Rawlings, president of ParanormalDate.com, says so many people hunger to share their experiences about the paranormal, the unexplainable, or the afterlife, and so much more. And this is the source for them to meet and share that common interest. So sign up for free at ParanormalDate.com. ParanormalDate.com. And use the code GEORGE if you decide to connect with someone you like. Back pain doesn't take vacations. It never celebrates holidays. It's on the job 24-7 to keep your life exactly where it is, in limbo. But it doesn't have to be that way because Laser Spine Institute can help you take back your life from chronic neck and back pain. With a less than one inch incision, our minimally invasive procedures have provided relief to over 60,000 patients with a 97% patient satisfaction rate. So get ready to stand tall and live the life you've imagined for yourself without pain. Are you or a loved one suffering from a bulging disc? herniated disc, spinal stenosis, pinched nerve, or degenerative disc disease? Call our spine care consultants now at 855-519-BACK. For a no-cost MRI review and to learn more, it's time to say goodbye to chronic neck and back pain. Call 855-519-BACK now to see if laser spine surgery is right for you. That's 855-519-BACK. What have you got to lose? Laser Spine Institute, the leader in minimally invasive spine surgery. Hi, this is Don Ecker, and you are tuned into the Paracast. Let me tell you what, you're going to hear stuff here that you probably won't hear anywhere else. Hear that, George Snorri? Before we go on with Sean Correa of Anonymous Uprising, let me tell you, we've got a second radio show, which we call After the Paracast. And it is only available if you subscribe to the Paracast Plus. To learn more, you go to plus.theparacast.com. That's P-L-U-S dot theparacast.com. And we offer a commercial-free version of this show. We offer the After the Paracast podcast, selected audio and video recordings from Paul Kimball's Other Side of Truth, and lots more coming and we've added a weekly subscription for those who say four ninety nine a month is too much. How about a dollar forty nine a week? Our price super cheap. Plus dot the com. Sean Korea is responsible for Anonymous Uprising, and we were talking about the fact that he had worked with Dr. Stephen Greer. And let me point out here that if you want an example of a so called ufologist really, really in it for himself and not really advancing UFO research, you've got the A number one numero uno example there. And we have been after him in terms of criticizing what he does for a long time. Have you worked with anyone else other than Dr. Greer? Um, I have, and I've indirectly provided and validated um, uh, you know, findings, docu- done document review, uh, validated um, video content or authenticated video content. In particular, an example, there was a video that, that went viral not too long ago. It was, it was, a, it can't, it was a, a, a video shot from uh, the Department of Homeland Security. And this was the first government uh, video that had been released in, in a number of years, at least to my uh, recollection. And so we were responsible for authenticating that video um, through our connections at the Department of Homeland Security. So we've done stuff like that. Also, we've tried to organize 
some collaboration on some particular subjects. So well, there's a lot of groups, uh, new age groups out there in particular that like to get some perspective. And of course, a lot, most people are pushing for uh, some cooperation and collaboration amongst the different ufologists. So we've tried to facilitate that for a number of them. So uh, folks like Linda Mooton Howe, Stephen Bassett, Nick Pulp um, are just a few. Okay, well, when it comes to Linda Moulton Howe and Stephen do Bassett, it, do okay, it. these are not always the best examples of UFO research. Chris? Both Gene and I have been involved in this field for decades. And um, I, for instance, I've known Linda 20 almost 25 years, Stephen Greer, longer. In fact, Linda helped uh, train me to be a field investigator. I have a tremen- tremendous amount of respect for, for her body of work up until about maybe 10 years ago. Uh, and then she went off on, you know, the cult of personality deep end that um, everybody that you mentioned so far, uh, pretty much uh, P.D. Barnum, Stephen Bassett, you know, I mean, who is the guy? He has no uh, personal history. He came out of nowhere. All of a sudden is, uh, you know, the disclosure expert. When uh, both uh, you and I, Sean, know that the U.S. government's role in our culture is, is control, and that's what governments are about. The government does not control the UFO subject, so they will never admit that and disclose anything. Um, right. Probably a vast majority and- of the is probably held in the private sector. Um, and-, and just to interject a thought here, what I, I've literally spoken to thousands of people because I try to keep myself available to anybody who has any questions, you know, as best as I can. Obviously, I'm just one person. But um, when people ask questions and are curious how, if they start getting interested in the subject matter, how can they, you know, uh, any advice I could give them to kind of navigate through this? And I've given them some some pretty straightforward advice as it relates to this. Number one, you know, a ufologist can't really be successful or make a name for themselves without creating a narrative that's unique to them to differentiate themselves from the other guy. And ultimately, that's how they hope to become popular and, and you know, sell their their material. Um, so what I what I tell people is anything you find that, you know, uh, proposes to explain the why and the how is probably not true. So when people talk about the alien agenda, whether we're, you know, I, I mean, I've heard a number of different versions of this and nothing, none of it, I've, I've seen any evidence to support it, you know, that they're here to study us and they're taking, you know, uh, biological samples and they're, you know, all these abductions or, or, you know, that they're completely benevolent and there are guardians or, you know, there's how many explanations have there been? Anybody that tries to tell you what the alien agenda is, what their intentions are, is, in my view, being as a researcher, as a scientist, as anybody who's, you know, uh, proclaiming to report fact is just irresponsible because it's just not true. Nobody, number one, it's not it's not true because I, I can debunk their specific um, position on the matter. It's not true because how could you possibly know? I mean, really? Yeah, yeah, and that's um, what the Paracast it, is it, all about. It, we're we're it, in yeah, the exact it, it, same it, position uh, in terms of what, what we're attempting to do with the show. And, you know, here's a rule of thumb that I give people. If the person is attempting to have a career as a ufologist, and there are very few exceptions to this, but if they're attempting to pay their bills with their ufological work, in my mind, they're not to be trusted, they're compromised, they have personal uh, agendas, and they have to come up with new and different things every six months to legitimize uh, you know, their exposure, their their level uh, of, uh, of, of, of visibility. And uh, to my mind, anybody who has a job trying to pay their bills in ufology, uh, you shouldn't really uh, pay much attention to them. I agree with that 100 percent. That's why anonymous uprising. Obviously, I, you know, I own a private military contractor called Phalanx Security Group. PSG is a contract. We have about 300 special operators. You know, we provide security services. For the most part, my company is going to fund um, most of anonymous uprisings, expeditions, and overall operations. Um, our outreach to the public, we're, you know, going to build a platform 
by which we can aggregate large volumes of data and analyze and model that data in real time. It, and and that, that platform is you know, going to cost a pretty penny to, to build uh, and create from scratch. But we've got some really talented people that have uh, enabled us to be able to do that at cost. So that's really what we're investing most of the capital in. If, we, yeah. if I had a million dollars sitting around, that wouldn't put my company at risk. I would do it myself. And a lot of what we've done up to this point has been self-funded. But our revenue and our funding source is completely separate and has nothing to do with the perp- with you know the mission of anonymous opera uprising. Yeah, yeah. We did it that way, not because we didn't think that we could trust ourselves to maintain our integrity, but I just don't think it's right if you're doing something and your your objective is to is to affect the outcome in a significant way. I don't know how you can turn around and just and and monetize your your work. I think this this belongs to everybody. And nobody should say who or who cannot uh, participate and do their part or contribute. I don't think anybody should should have the right to say that to anybody else. And I I think for me, by comparison to other ufologists, our work will probably be very, very boring because real research is a lot, a lot of work, a lot of time, a lot of patience, and a lot of data, a lot of numbers to go through. And it's the kind of stuff that gets scientists excited, but probably the uh, average person not too excited. But it's the outcome that we're we're trying to achieve. That's the important thing. So, Where are you getting this data that you're crunching? Well, what we're going to do is we're going to, of course, record um, all of our contact sessions. So we we found a a way theoretically to use um, technology to replicate consciousness in a very rudimentary way. Consciousness in a rudimentary way. We're getting into an interesting realm here. We've got Sean Correa of Anonymous Uprising. We're going to find out more of what they're doing and what the prospects might be with Gene and Chris. You're in the Paracast. Thank you for listening to GCN. Visit GCNlive.com today. We also have swag. You know, we have all these exclusive PowerCast things that you can buy. We've got like, I guess, 60 or so different items. And entails t-shirts, sleeves for notebook computers, iPad cases, mouse pads, the PowerCast jumbo tote bag, all sorts of t-shirts and jackets and stuff like that for men and women. We have a PowerCast aluminum water bottle. All this stuff, you go to store.thepowercast.com, store.thepowercast.com. What makes it special is that the items are the best quality, you know, great T-shirts, fabrics, and they have our official logo on them. That's what makes them special in multiple sizes and colors. We even have stuff for children, stuff for women, stuff for men. We have all sorts of sizes, like small up to X large. A lot of good stuff. That's the swag from the Powercast. If you go to store.thepowercast.com, stop by and take a shopping tour. Is there a stock market bubble in the making? You need an early warning system for your investments because you work too hard to be surprised by your money. Now, guarding your wealth has never been easier. Introducing WealthGuard from OnTheMarkMoney.com, an early warning system that tracks all your accounts. WealthGuard lets you know in advance if your accounts are dropping. It works for all accounts, whether you work with us or not. Get WealthGuard today, 100% free. Go to OnTheMarkMoney.com. That's OnTheMarkMoney.com. In these uncertain times, it makes sense to have a sustainable backup method to cook food and boil water. If your current plan includes using a fuel-burning stove or cooking over an open fire, then there's a much better way. The Miniman Rocket Stove is a biomass-burning cooking stove that only requires small quantities of sticks and twigs for fuel. The Miniman Stove is easy to use, smokeless, portable, powerful, and sustainable. For the finest in survival cooking stoves and fire starters made right here in the USA, go to MinutemanStove.com. That's MinutemanStove.com.
Why be held hostage by your wireless carrier for two years? What if you had no contract, no activation fees, no hidden costs, tracking, tracing, harvesting customer data, or draconian gimmicks? All on America's largest 4G LTE, GSM, and Sprint networks. Introducing PIX Wireless. Activate your Sprint, AT&T, or unlock GSM phones with PIX and choose from an arsenal of monthly plans or build your own. Starting at only $2.99 per month. Get connected now. Call or click 1-866-205-9513 or PIXWireless.com, spelled P-I-X Wireless.com. Pick PIX and get connected today. My name is Robin. I'm 47 years of age. I absolutely love One World Whey. It was about five years ago when a trainer told me it was the end all of protein powders. One day when I ran out, I decided to try other brands. I spent eight months and could not find a replacement. I went through tons of brands, types, and flavors, and almost all of them tasted unnatural and not pleasant. When it all boiled down, I came right back to One World Whey. I buy the cost-effective five-pound container and my family craves their one world way too i look forward to and enjoy having my one world way and feel great after i drink it thank you synergistic nutrition for perfecting a protein powder in the product one world way from taste to how it makes me and my family feel you get an a plus plus call 888-988-3325 or visit oneworldway.com that's one world w-h-e-y.com This is Ben Gordon, and if your teeth are stained from coffee, tea, or smoking, Power Swabs is the answer. In five minutes, you'll see two shades whiter teeth, and in seven days, six shades. There's no messy strips or trays that you have to leave in your mouth for an hour. Just swab your teeth for five minutes, and you're done. To try Power Swabs, call 1-800-290-8480. Your bright white smile will have your friends talking about how great you look. Try it risk-free. 1-800-290-8480. That's 1-800-290-8480. This is Kurt Southern, the author of UFO Mysteries, and you're listening to the Paracast. Okay, you're talking, Sean, about duplicating consciousness in a rudimentary way. I assume you're doing something with computers here. What are we talking about? Well, what we're able to do is it's pretty straightforward. When you, and I'm not a practitioner right? But I do have practitioners on the team who can get into the nitty gritty, but just at a high level. So basically how it works is we can map um, human brain activity today. So when you, you, when you map it, every um, brain wave, the, the data and the information that the brain outputs can be replicated and then broadcasted using technology. Now you got to remember we're, Going at this, it's not like communicating with another culture who speaks another language, okay? This would be like trying to communicate with an ant, right? So it's, uh, it's, very, it's challenging to master communicating complex ideas to an ant. So we have to use a very simple communication that we can broadcast and that gets reciprocated in a format that we can understand. And then from that, we can build on it and try to communicate more complex ideas to the point, if we get really good at it, we master it, we can get to the point where we can actually have what we would consider almost a conversation to try to reach some basic understanding of what we're dealing with. I mean, we have no concept of what their likes, their loves are. Uh, a lot of people that, you know, that fall into trying to explain their intentions fail to recognize that we, we can't even begin to understand what their politics are, <laughs> what their point of view is. It could be completely different than, you know, we're trying to re- make them more relatable to us in an effort to understand them. And I think that's probably an error. I think we should just start from scratch and assume that they're nothing like us. Okay, so we're assuming a lot of facts here. We're assuming that UFOs represent visitations by an extraterrestrial race. And obviously there are skeptics out there who don't go that far. And when you look over the UFO field through the years, you'll see evidence of certainly intelligent control. You'll also see evidence in the early sightings as someone who has worked as a military contractor would probably realize evidence that we had our own stuff going on there in the early days of the UFO field in terms of test aircraft and so forth and so on. But on what basis do you conclude 
that we are being visited by E.T.? I believe that we're visited by E.T. I also believe that there's interdimensionals, uh, there's indigenous species to our planet that are here that we're just not, um, that we don't see, um, but who have been here with us. We've seen evidence of that. So it's, it's really like this. It's, there isn't just one fish in the ocean. So if you imagine yourself exposing all the different things you see, they're all very, very different. And a lot of the traffic that we see in the sky is, is frankly, it, that's, that's exactly what it is based on, on the behaviors we've recorded. They're just traffic, just passerbyers. Some, uh, and then some, we believe, that are, have been here and are here for a while and that we see on a recurring basis. We don't have a catalog of the different species or the different uh, phenomena in order to create discernible differentiation between them to try to focus on any one. So we're really kind of starting from scratch. And um, hopefully we can try and communicate in a, in a way that resonates with at least one of them. Um, so we can use that as a starting point. And we don't think that, I mean, we could, we could be five years down the road and not know a whole lot more, but at least get some fundamental questions answered. And I think that was in and of itself be enormous progress, but it, it's just so complex and so, um, you know, so broad in scope. Um, uh, it's really hard to, you know, uh, provide any clear factual confirmation in any one area that makes sense well you know what you're saying here is i think they could be thus and so but i didn't ask you that i asked you on what basis you conclude that any of those answers is correct et interdimensional some kind of lost civilization on earth or a breakaway civilization let's go through each one okay et how do you conclude that any of these so-called craft are et well my my person, what I know to be, you know, true based on what I've observed, I worked on um, a project designing microsatellites specifically designed to track, to observe, and to, in, in some instances, uh, disable uh, craft that were uh, in our system, in our solar system. And so if, if, we, if there's indigenous species or interdimensionals, that are, uh, you know, uh, occupying our solar system, um, and they're not extraterrestrials, um, that's possible. But all the evidence that I've seen suggests that they are, in fact, extraterrestrials. Um, they could, could very well uh, be from our solar system or outside our solar system. I don't know. But... Uh, based on what I've seen personally, which particular a satellite suggestion uh, that they, which which particular satellite system are you referring to? Well, we work on the boards, um, the technology that went into the satellites, where it went from there, and how it was, how many went into production, and how many they actually put uh, into play. I don't know. I only know from our initial. Uh, the initial launch of the first satellite that we put out there um, under, coincidentally, Project Phalanx, which is really what inspired me to call my company Phalanx, is what I'm referring to. And the, the specific capability that we installed was a, a technology, which we call LSDF, um, and a location-specific uh, digital fingerprint it's a technology that enabled us to um, temporarily disable systems in their craft, so that they could be, uh, be so they could use that technology for a controlled descent, so that they wouldn't destroy or harm the occupants, but could bring them in for closer study. And this is really also used as a fail-safe defense system, just in the case of the worst-case scenario, from what we were told. But uh, that, that's what I know. All right. Uh, I understand uh, this is really fascinating, but I'm still not getting an answer here. You're telling us how you're doing something, but you're not telling us what evidence there is that what is being seen is extraterrestrial. Can you be more specific? Well, other than what I just told you, I don't I can't. That's that is based on what I've seen. That would be my conclusion. I could be wrong, but 
uh, when I observe, in my view, you know, craft that occupy space and uh, in between space in our solar system, we've observed um, the assumption could only be that they're extraterrestrial if they're not ours. Uh, if they are terrestrial, uh, sophisticated technology, that's a possibility, like I said. But just based on what I've told you and what I understand, my, my guess is that they are for sure extraterrestrials. What characteristics specifically do you see that Structure. point? Go ahead. Well, well, structured craft, technology that has, you know, advanced propulsion systems that enable them to travel through space, that enable them to, um, uh, you know, to do what we observe them doing versus interdimensional technologies, which don't really have structure. Those orbs and those craft partially materialize and are almost opaque. And we believe, you know, that that appears to be um, technology used to um, uh, to travel between dimensions. So we think the uh, more structured crafts were designed specifically for space travel. So, uh, and a lot of the interdimensional uh, um, uh, sightings, um, it, in some cases, even appear to be actual beings. So it's not even a, a, a craft, per se, that, that partially materializes. It looks like it's a, um, a being. It looks like it's a, a, some kind of a, a life form and not a craft, uh, which is interesting. Have you ever uh, heard of the, a UFO researcher, and we'll have to go into our next segment on this, named Trevor James Constable? who wrote a book called They Live in the Sky, he talked about some UFOs being living beings. And that's what you bring up. And that's why we're going to ask you more about some of the things you've discovered and try to get some more information. We do have to break in a moment, sir. We have to break in a moment. And then we'll get back to this. Of course, we're talking to Sean Correa. The project is Anonymous Uprising. And we're focusing our attention very much so on the evidence that convinces him that we're being visited by E.T. and to some degree by interdimensional beings and maybe by those from a breakaway civilization. With Gene and Chris, you're in the Paracast. You are listening to GCN. Visit GCNlive.com today. Attack of the Rockoids has been well received by critics and readers alike. It's a -a thrill-a-minute story you'll never forget. A former U.S. military intelligence officer is haunted by intense dreams about a beautiful woman pleading for his help after a terrible battle in outer space. But the dreams turn out to be true and thrust him into a telepathic love affair with a woman whose faraway planet is intent on destroying the Earth. And now the gripping tale continues in The Coming of the Protectors. It's the second book of the Rockoids trilogy, a galaxy-spanning adventure that pits our hapless heroes against powerful, fanatical enemies that threaten the lives of freedom-loving beings everywhere. Attack of the Rockoids and The Coming of the Protectors, classic science fiction at its best, available now. For more details, visit rockoids.com. That's R-O-C-K-O-I-D-S dot com. Lifetime Gray's 100% grass-fed beef has the health benefits you seek. When compared to conventional beef, it offers good fats while virtually eliminating the bad. That's the result of cattle who never eat grain, ever. Rich in antioxidants, including vitamin E, C, beta-carotene, and CLA. No artificial hormones, antibiotics, or other drugs. For all our fresh, non-cooked products with only 100% grass-fed beef, go to MidasResources.com. Use voucher code GCN to get 30% off your order. MidasResources.com or find us on Facebook. Hi, this is Ted Anderson. I'm here to tell you about GCNTelecare.com, a team of board-certified doctors assisting you 24 hours a day, 7 days a week, 365 days a year. Within 15 minutes of registration, care your family can afford. Revolutionizing the healthcare industry, virtual consulting, providing diagnosis of non-emergency medical issues by phone or secure video on computer or smart mobile devices. GCNTelecare.com, virtual care anywhere. Yeah! 
Welcome back to the Paracast, the gold standard of paranormal radio. And now, here's Gene Steinberg. Sean Correa of Anonymous Uprising is with us. Let's just go into this evidence more. So you're saying that the instantaneous disappearance of a craft may indicate to you that it is going into another dimension. Is that correct? Yes. In some cases, we also uh, observed that craft disappearing and then reappearing, you know, 100 miles, 200 miles away. So we think that they're able to travel uh, within a single dimension. Um, that's what enables them to, to travel so at such high speeds, but also use that same uh, technology to travel between dimensions. And, and yeah, like you said, I, I've heard that, uh, well, I think I've heard, I've heard of the, some of the, uh, the, the caterpillars in the sky that look like, like snakes or caterpillars, but are actually craft. And, and some people have theorized they're biological, which is kind of interesting. It's certainly not outside the realm of possibility. From my own personal experience, and I think for most people that I talk to that are curious about this, that want to have an, have an experience of their own, I would say most people the reason why everybody doesn't see craft is not everybody's looking. If if you spend uh, some time just looking at the sky, you'll see <laughs> you'll see craft. I mean, the uh, former uh, defense minister for Canada said it actually pretty eloquently when he said that you know there's they occupy our skies with the frequency and and in the same numbers as airplanes, you know, air traffic. And I find that to be actually uh, pretty true. But most people don't look up too often and, and usually don't venture out more than 55 miles away from where they live. For myself, when I decided to get into this and I wanted to get some hands-on, I bought a telescope. It's maybe five, $600 telescope, the best I could find, you know, not being an optics pro. And I pointed it at the moon and I took my cell phone, put it on the eyepiece, made sure to block out any light and took a few pictures of what I observed on the moon. It doesn't take a lot to recognize they're real and they're out there. When you start to try to get too deep, you start to realize that there's more different varieties and more things that you'll see that you can't explain that don't seem to be related to each other, which can be frustrating, <laughs> but it's true. So I've had a number of experiences, uh, sometimes by accident, sometimes intentionally just observing the skies to see what I can see. And I, based on what I've seen, it would certainly appear as though a number of these are extraterrestrial. If they're not, I, I don't have another explanation for them, you know. I can um, identify with that. You know, people ask me all the time, uh, you know, how come you've seen so many things uh, over the years? And, yeah, I mean, it's a very simple answer. I look. Most people right. don't look above eye level. And uh, they're not really that familiar with their surroundings. <clears throat> when yeah. you live in the country. They look on the Internet. Yeah, they're looking down at their phones, basically. Exactly. I've, I've, I've lived years and years uh, out in the great outdoors in rural areas. And um, I think people that live in rural areas uh, just, I think, just automatically are uh, much more attendant to their um, surroundings and, and, and more observant and uh, and more apt to um, to see things um, because they're they're actually more aware. I think, you know, you mentioned Paul Hellyer. Um, I, I haven't heard any names um, that you've mentioned um, that haven't had some sort of PR kind of presence. You know, they're, the people that, that Gene and I and, and, and a lot of the listeners on our show uh, tend to be more familiar with and, and tend to um, gravitate towards are the ones that don't um, – have PR presences, don't have cults of personality, people that are quietly doing the work uh, and um, are doing it in such a way that doesn't include compromising um, uh, sensibilities. You know, I, I was a cameraman at the um, at the Citizens Hearing on, hearing on Disclosure. I saw all five days. And to, to have uh, Stephen Bassett, to have Paul Hellyer get up and finish the entire five-day proceedings by reading a quote from a book by a very questionable contactee and uh, quote the aliens and, and how they uh, they see us and how we're destroying our environment and stuff. It, to me, it, it's this field, this field is so childish and is so um, uh, immature because of the fact that people tend to 
listen to, to you know, who's yelling the loudest or, or who has the, 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 the highest uh, level of visibility. And um, I really think that there's a serious lack of discernment uh, in the field. Uh, I don't think there's enough uh, emphasis on, on people becoming educated, having a well-rounded knowledge of those who have done excellent work uh, prior to this particular <laughs> day and age, um, going all the way back uh, into the 40s and 50s, uh, in the 60s and 70s. There, there are many, many people, uh, brilliant thinkers, uh, who you've never heard of. Uh, that have way more to share uh, in terms of, of insights and, and the gravitas of, of, of knowledge uh, than anyone that you've mentioned. Uh, and I, I really urge all our listeners uh, constantly, as Gene does, to really become a well-rounded person in, in, in this field in terms of your your. You're looking for knowledge, looking for, for sources of, of knowledge and inspiration that are grounded in, in science and grounded in, in reality, not wishful thinking. And, um, you know, I really I, I admire your enthusiasm. I think that um, you, you have a, a very um, what appears to be on the surface, a, a good concept. But I think you're, you're still operating and, and, you know, pardon me if I'm maybe misstating this, but I think you're still operating from a from a place of, of pop culture and uh, kind of a want to believe perspective. Well, and, well, just to clarify for all the listeners and just to be absolutely fair so that there's no misunderstanding, I am not a person that has any answers at all. All I can offer are probably infinite questions. And that's really how we're approaching this. I, I'm, my goal is if I can, if, if we can do a body of research that stands up to, you know, scientific rigor, which we could take to an established institution and they could, could look at our work, look at our methods, and we use standard, uh, you know, broadly uh, approved methods to collect the data we collect. And it can stand up to that scientific rigor. And one institution looks at what we did, says you did all the right things, you didn't take any shortcuts, and you produced a volume of, of research that was done correctly. And that provokes at least one institution to jump in and say, okay, we're going to take a look at this, and we're going to actually, based on this, we're going to you know, uh, fund uh, the next step in this process. That would be a huge win. A huge win, and I yeah, that, agree no, with that you. sounds I, excellent. I, I'm really, I'm really that, gratified that, that, to hear you say that. Why don't we uh, you, kind of uh, look at some of the protocols and uh, methodology and technology that you're that you're um, you're planning to throw at this um, at this conundrum, and also uh, how you're identifying where you're going to uh, to um, you know concentrate your efforts. So, uh, just the basics. So we've got a. Uh, we've got a, a, a gentleman who is a tenured professor who is um, a, an expert in behavioral science to kind of help us with crafting messages that <laughs> um, won't inadvertently um, or couldn't be misunderstood or inadvertently create a problem. We want to be responsible um, and with with how we craft the messages that we broadcast. Uh, we don't want to uh, cause any problems. We want to, to learn. Uh, we also have an expert in uh, communications who's worked with just a whole array of different technologies in the area of RS and other uh, broadcast technologies who can help uh, interact and uh, experiment with some different technologies to help us in our effort to, to uh, communicate. And then we have some experts in in critical thinking, uh, critical problem solving, and and we have a a team of software developers to help us in our analysis and help us to craft protocols that will work. Nothing we are suggesting. This is all theorized. Let's continue our next segment about the methodologies that you're using for anonymous uprising with Gene and Chris. You're in the Paracast. <laughs> Neighbors, I want to tell you about my favorite graphics app. 
It's the award-winning Graphic Converter. You know, Graphic Converter is the universal genius for photo editing on your Mac. Join over one and a half million loyal users for this Swiss Army Knife photo editing app. It gives you all you expect from a top-flight image editing app with tons of features. And most important, it's easy to use. It's also far less expensive than that other app that you can only get by subscription. You know, the one I'm talking about. What's more, you can get 20% off with your order right now. So write this down to learn about Graphic Converter. Go to www.lemkesoft.de slash gene. Let me spell that. www.lemkesoft.de slash gene. Message and data rates may apply. Hi, I'm Frank Thomas. When I was playing ball, they called me the big hurt. But after I left the game, Mother Nature started putting a big hurt on me. I just couldn't stay in shape like I used to. Turns out, it wasn't my fault. Once you hit 40, your body has less free testosterone, and that can make it harder to get into shape. But luckily, I found out about Nugenix. Nugenix is a unique man-boosting formula powered by Testofen, a patented key ingredient clinically researched to help boost your free testosterone levels. Get a complimentary bottle now by texting PRIME11 to 42424. With Nugenix, you can feel stronger, leaner, with a lot more stamina and energy. And guys, she'll like the difference too. Nugenix is GNC's number one selling men's vitality product. Get a complimentary bottle now by texting PRIME11 to 42424. Nugenix samples are not available in stores. So again, text PRIME11 to 42424. Hi, this is Ted Anderson. I'm here to tell you about GCNTelecare.com, a team of board-certified doctors assisting you 24 hours a day, 7 days a week, 365 days a year. Within 15 minutes of registration, care your family can afford. Revolutionizing the healthcare industry, virtual consulting, providing diagnosis of non-emergency medical issues by phone or secure video on computer or smart mobile devices. GCNTelecare.com. Virtual care anywhere. Will the government protect your family from Iran and North Korea's newest weapon, EMP? We buy guns to protect ourselves. Home, health, and car insurance for accidents. Maybe you also have food storage. But how would you keep your refrigerator running in a long-term EMP blackout? Using tested military designs, the Solark EMP-hardened solar generator protects and powers your critical appliances for years without burying items underground or wrapping them in aluminum foil. Unlike other preps, Solark is used every day to help offset your electric bill automatically. Visit PortableSolarLLC.com to learn Learn how easily expandable the system is. Solark is the most affordable and powerful solution on the market. The whole system even fits in the back of a pickup or SUV and can install in less than an hour. See for yourself why Solark beats other off-grid systems at PortableSolarLLC.com. Don't wait for the government. Go to PortableSolarLLC.com to learn why Solark is energy insurance for your family. Water is the single most important thing your body needs, so you want to be sure it's the best for you and your family. Since 2005, thousands have depended on Berkey Purified Water. The Berkey Guy provides the lowest priced filtration systems in every size. For incredibly delicious water now and in an emergency, get to GoBerkey.com or call 877-886-3653, 877-886-3653. We'd like to hear from you. If you have a comment or question about the Paracast, send it to news at theparacast.com. That's news at theparacast.com. And don't forget to visit our famous Paracast community forums at forum.theparacast.com. So we're looking at the methodologies here for, I guess, instituting first contact from Sean Korea of Anonymous Uprising. Before we go on, though, can you name any of the scientists that you're working with so we get an idea of the fields and who they are? I, I can't. I wouldn't feel comfortable. They, at this point, uh, I was elected to be the sort of the public face and for obvious reasons, I'm protecting the anonymity of the people that are involved because they all make a living in the legitimate world where where they work. So we don't want to 
create any problems that might affect their livelihood or their careers to participate in this. So I hope, I hope you understand. I hope our listeners understand. Well, I think part of the issue here is you're trying to raise a lot of money. Your GoFundMe campaign is for $1 million. And to get enough people to come up with enough money to fund this, they're going to want as much information as they can get. This is not just somebody trying to raise money for an operation. Good point. Let me do this. Let me ask their permission. And if they say it's okay, I'll publish it. But the other issue I think we have here is whether trying to initiate first contact is the cart before the horse. Wouldn't it be better to first fund more research to get a better handle on what UFOs are? And then step two, if you still conclude it's ET and something that can be contacted, you attempt that contact. That's also a good point. We thought about that, but we have to start somewhere. And getting access to, I think from my experiences and the experiences of the team, without cooperation from the military, be difficult to observe them close enough to get really uh, much of a better understanding than we have now. So by initiating contact and doing it well and, and, and building on that, we can get them close enough to get some of those answers. So we've t- talked through that and uh, I'm not sure how we would approach it the other way. So this was just seemed to be the most sensible way to start. But what if there is really nothing that you can contact? It could be a phenomenon that does not have any way of engaging in back and forth conversation with earthlings. That's a possibility. I can't say that that's not a possibility. It's a possibility, but you know, we'll, we'll find that out. Um, I, from what I've seen and observed, I'm optimistic that, that some, at least some can communicate in a way that might be meaningful. Part, some of the reasons why I don't think that's happened yet to this, to this point is the methods that people have used, you know, consciousness alone, it's really difficult to sustain a complex idea in your mind long enough to, for it to be reciprocated. You know, it's, it's even the best People who are masters at meditation and can do that really well have a challenge or challenged by it. And the other thing is, depending on the location that you pick, it can be problematic if you're near, you know, if you're operating near a commercial, um, uh, any commercial air traffic or near a military installation. Um, a lot of times they'll get chased out of the area before you've had a chance to really collect a whole lot of data. So, um, so that that's that's one of the things that we thought through. Well, I'm still confused as to what the actual, um, uh, you know, what you're actually doing uh, when you are uh, uh, attempting to initiate contract. I mean, Stephen Greer flashes lights. He he plays the cuckoo sounds uh, recorded in a uh, a crop circle. All the students uh, place their hands on the doctor. They coherent thought sequence and meditate. And and the doctor is the conduit in which their their uh, invitation is sent out to the cosmos. I I mean, there's various ways. Uh, Ray Stanford well, back in the fifties used to uh, uh, do uh, candles in. Uh, <laughs> coffee cans in the shape of a flying saucer, a huge, you know, 300 foot, uh, little lit dots on the ground. Uh, what sort of technology are you using? Uh, well, what some do you- of the stuff Greer's done. Yeah. Some of the stuff that Greer's done, you know, it, it, like I said, it's whale watching basically. I mean, you know, some of those methods work to get their attention, get them to vector in on a, on a particular group of people and they'll, they'll show up in the sky and yes, uh, you know, a laser pointer, um, I wouldn't recommend pointing one, you know, in an area that has a lot of commercial traffic, but they will interact with that and respond back. And, you know, you have a, a moment, but it's fleeting. Sean, you're mentioning here what Stephen Greer is doing. And you understand that serious UFO researchers take nothing what he says or claims as serious. Well, have you gone true. out? Well, yeah, on the, but- have you actually gone out on these so-called C-SETI expeditions and seeing this stuff for yourself or is this just what you've heard i i no, i haven't I, number one i've reviewed all the footage um number two i've replicated this on my own and i see how it works i see the merit in some of the techniques that are used some of them are for show in my opinion um you know are a little bit you know are there to build camaraderie and create a oneness or whatever it's a little bit creepy to me, but 
some of the basics, um, you know, the broadcasting of the tones, the um, picking a remote location that's, you know, not near a dense a densely populated area, so you're easier to be vectored in on, the consciousness, the meditation, the cosync thought, uh, uh, you know, that some of that stuff can produce results. The problem with, with the problem I've had is none of that information has been documented so that you could build on it, and there hasn't really been anything done to, um, uh, to produce a consistent result or created a a mechanism by way you they could reciprocate and we can decipher what they sent back to us in a meaningful way and understand it. So there's big, um, you know, there's big holes in that. It's like any, anybody can take uh, a gun, go out and, and shoot it. Whether you hit your targets, another question. That's, that's kind of the way I look at it. I think there, there could have been a little bit more structure put around this, uh, you know, you could have let, le- he could have leveraged more expertise to understand what works, what doesn't, and try to improve and build on it. And that's really what we're focused on doing. In his, in his particular situation, there's no real reason to do that because what he's doing is working for his own, you know, business and what his personal objectives are. So, okay, so you have seen that. videos like here, a, you know, you have seen videos from Greer that show anomalous phenomena. And understand, this has never well, been produced for anybody. Group. This has and, never been know, produced all, for all anybody. Of these things have been... No, none of this has I'm ever sorry? been produced for anybody. I think he had something one time—a movie that showed an alien, which was shown to be bogus. You understand the concerns right. here? Well, no, I totally do, and and I'm not using you know just. This isn't secondhand. I'm saying that I've I've taken some of the protocols. They're pretty pretty simple, rudimentary and and uh, replicated them on my own and they do yield results just not the kind of results that i think would be you know sufficient to um to really study i mean <laughs> Look, we know hey. we know they're there we know they're real they'll show up 15 20 minutes they're up there you can observe them and then they're gone that's to me is not enough we need to figure out a way to uh, to improve on that and that's what we're trying to do Let's cover that part in our next segment. We have more with Sean Correa and Gene and Chris. You're in The Paracast. Thank you for listening to GCN. Be sure to visit GCNlive.com today. This is Ben Gordon, and if your teeth are stained from coffee, tea, or smoking, Power Swabs is the answer. In five minutes, you'll see two shades whiter teeth, and in seven days, six shades. There's no messy strips or trays that you have to leave in your mouth for an hour. Just swab your teeth for five minutes, and you're done. To try Power Swabs, call 1-800-290-8480. Your bright white smile will have your friends talking about how great you look. Try it risk-free. 1-800-290-8480. That's 1-800-290-8480. This is Dan Pilla. Do you owe the IRS money you can't pay? Are tax debts crippling you? I've defended people from the IRS for over 30 years. I've helped thousands and I can help you too. I wrote the book on IRS settlement and I'm telling you, there's no such thing as a hopeless case. Call 800-34-NO-TAX to finally get free of IRS debt. With the IRS's new programs, there's never been a better time to solve your problem. Call 800-34-NO-TAX. That's 800-34-NO-TAX or my website, danpilla.com. Individuals and businesses with tax problems, listen carefully. Do you feel like you're losing control over your finances? If you owe over $10,000 in back taxes or have unfiled tax returns, we can help you take back control. The IRS is the largest and most aggressive collection agency in the world, and they can seize your bank account, garnish your paycheck, close your business, and file criminal charges. Take control of your tax problems now by calling the experts at Tax Mediation Services and take advantage of the Fresh Start program and new laws that may allow us to negotiate a settlement for the lowest amount possible. Our team of tax attorneys and enrolled agents can stop collections and get you protected so you can take control of your financial future. Tax Mediation Services is accredited by the Better Business Bureau. Call now for a free case review and a price protection guaranteed quote. Call Tax Mediation Services now at 800-615-7709. That's 800-615-7709. 
800-615-7709. Good day, America. Are you tired of your butt cheeks being frozen? Tired of cold hands or cold feet? I'm tired of the cold. Well, there's a new kid on the block. It's Fortress Clothing. Fortress will keep you warm. Fortress does what no other clothing company has ever done. We keep you warm in the cold, even when wet. You heard that right, even when wet. No BS, no gimmicks. Work, play, sweat in the cold, and stay warm. So quit your complaining and go to FortressClothing.com. FortressClothing.com, enter coupon code AMERICA and get 20% off any item. Mittens, jackets, pants, balaclavas, or hot socks. FortressClothing.com, enter coupon code AMERICA. You're going to love being warm all winter long. FortressClothing.com. Dangerous blood clot device alert. If you or a loved one had an IVC filter placed to prevent blood clots from traveling to your heart or lungs and suffered an injury, you may be entitled to substantial financial compensation. The FDA warns that IVC filters may cause serious complications, such as heart or lung damage, internal bleeding, and even death. These dangerous blood clot devices can break and the metal fragments can travel to your heart or lungs, causing serious injuries. If you or a loved one one suffered organ damage or other injuries from an IVC filter, you may be entitled to substantial financial compensation. Act now. Time is limited to file a claim. For a free consultation and free information, call Injury Help Desk at 800-478-1507. 800-478-1507. 800-478-1507. This is an advertisement. Paid non-attorney spokesperson. Injuryhelpdesk.com is responsible for this advertisement. Principal Office, Las Vegas, Nevada. This is Robert Hastings, author of UFOs and Nukes, and you're listening to the Paracast, the gold standard of paranormal radio. We're continuing with our discussion of the methodology and the background with Sean Correa of Anonymous Uprising. Chris? Yeah. <laughs> You know, Sean, I was there at the very beginning when uh, Stephen and Sherry Adamak, his um, original, I guess you could call her sort of coordinator and, and, and manager of CSETI, Sherry was actually a very, very close friend of mine. And back in the early 90s, I invited Stephen down to Crestone, Colorado, where he's now, I think for 24 years now, he's every year he does one of his ambassadors uh, to the universe trainings in the little town that I it turned him on to back in the early 90s. And I saw the evolution of his protocols, uh, how he um, developed his uh, methodology. Interesting to, to note, the first three years uh, that he was in Colorado, in the first uh, weekend of June, doing his uh, sessions, charging an arm and a leg for them, I might add. We had uh, all sorts of activity all around the uh, the region, the San Luis Valley, where the little town Crestone is located. But none of it was on the side of the valley that he was on. And it's almost like he, he had given, um, he'd send out a request for contact and forgotten to give uh, precise directions <laughs> on where they should go because we had reports coming in. I swear to God, those first three years, we had reports coming in of, of unusual aerial activity, but none of it within 50, 60 miles of where Greer was actually coherent thought sequencing and broadcasting his um, those cuckoo sounds that he plays uh, that were recorded in crop circle. So, uh, you know, there is something to the idea of eliciting some form of um, communication or contact. What is being contacted? I, I absolutely, uh, I, I don't agree with Greer's analysis that, uh, that benevolent space brothers from uh, other star systems are, are coming here at the behest of, uh, of the good doctor and his uh, minions. I, I don't for uh, a second think that that's what's going on. I, I'm more prone to think that it's something a, a lot closer to home. You know, people often accuse me of being the guy that believes in aliens and, and my stock answer is, well, wait a minute, how do you know we're not the aliens and they're more terrestrial than we are? So, you know, when I, at the beginning of our show here, when you mentioned all the various possibilities that 
we could be dealing with here. Um, I was gratified to hear that uh, you have an open mind and that you haven't been totally indoctrinated like most people, actually, um, that uh, these are all well, aliens. Well, from that's true. Well, no, you're right. The only, in my opinion, the only responsible, credible position to have as it relates to this, as it relates to God, as it relates to all the big questions is, I don't know, but I would love to find out. That's really all there is to it. And that's why I stay away. There is factual information. This happened. This was observed. Here are the coordinates where this happened. There is factual information available on the public domain, for sure. But all the narrative to try to explain what it is, why they're here, that leads into these conspiracies, which is an interesting segue, actually. That's one of the things that I can speak on with some authority is – the federal government's role in this is blown way out of proportion. And, and I can tell you that with absolute authority. I, just like any organization, any country, any community, okay, are there individuals that are, I mean, even in ufology, right? There are people out there who have their own self-interest, have a personal agenda, and try to steer policy and do things that are going to satisfy their own personal objectives. Absolutely, there's corruption everywhere. Absolutely. I just don't think that, in fact, I know that there is, this is not an overarching government controlled, you know, malicious conspiracy going on here. I mean, there's really good reasons that I support for not making some of the technology and some of these findings available on the public domain. There's some really good reasons. Uh, one is, you know, is, is people have uh, evaluated and studied some of these power sources. Uh, a lot of this stuff is abundant uh, power that's available um, everywhere. It's not like, you know, weapons grade uranium, which we can keep pretty close tabs on, right? You can't just pick that stuff up because you want it. We're not too worried about a terrorist getting their hands on it. But some of these other energy sources are readily abundant. If that technology was available, I'm sure that most people would use it for, for good reasons, but there are some people that would use it and could be uh, catastrophic. The other thing is is uh, this idea that, you know, oil companies and, you know, in, you know these um, elite uh, uh, members of the industry are, are, you know, trying to suppress certain technologies because they want to hold on to their monopolies. People who subscribe to that um, just don't understand business, don't understand the, the uh, life cycle of technology. The example I give is if I were to hand you a smartphone from today, 30 years ago, okay, you would look at it, and that technology might be neat to look at, but would have absolutely no place in your life. The only way a technology like that would be appreciated and could, uh, you know, uh, be used and better, you know, the quality of all of our lives is you have to slowly train people and 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 reset the mindset so that people develop a lifestyle that can appreciate these technologies. That's why they're released in small iterations leading up to our full potential. It's not because companies are trying to, you know, goose their profits and, and do all that stuff. That's just not accurate. So when you think about, we have real problems and a lot of problems do relate to our consumption of fossil fuels. There's no question, but to just suggest that you could go from fossil fuels to something that's as advanced as, you know, zero point energy as an example is just naive. You just don't understand how that works. That would not be the way to do it. And and so there's a lot of misperception. And I I know a lot of good people. I've worked with honorable, super smart uh, people at high, high levels of government. And uh, to lump them into this, you know, universal um, government conspiracy to, uh, you know, to uh, suppress technologies, hurt people and enslave people. I mean, it's just, it's just not true. I've not seen any evidence. Not to say that there's not bad people out there, and sometimes bad people can uh, implement policy and do things that are not great for the masses. There's no question that happens, but it's just not as widespread and overarching as what the Internet would have you believe.
I, I think there's a conspiracy a to, to what, wring every drop of of internal combustion of fossil fuel uh, technology uh, to wring every dime and nickel and penny out of the pockets of uh, the free world before we do graduate to sustainability and and renewable um, energy and oh, and hydrogen well, and, yeah, and, and sure. other technologies. Well, uh, there sure, definitely is a conspiracy time, to do that. I mean, just look at one million money. Iraqis being killed over a uh, sixth of the world's oil or whatever. There, there's, well, there's no question that 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 is true, but that has more to do with, and and I don't necessarily agree with it, but our our government is trying to assure its influence in the world, and when they, you know, unfortunately, the execution of that uh, long term, it's for our own interest and to ensure that chaos can't break out. They, they want to assure that World War II doesn't happen ever again. So America has spent its time, its strategy has been to assure and shore up our influence in every country in the world so that that never happens again. Now, the process of doing that is sometimes very ugly. There's no question. Yeah, a lot of innocent people get bases. hurt and a lot of bad things happen. <laughs> There's no question. But I'm just saying, my point is this. There are partners, there are good people, there are organizations and, and agencies within the government who I've partnered with um, who are trying to do good work, who – uh, have done a number of things to help the proliferation of, of technologies that have made people's lives easier. A lot of people don't realize this. A lot of the the coolest stuff you see started uh, in the military and the government at some point before it became available to for us for consumption. We got Sean Korea. More to come with Gene and Chris. You're in the podcast. <laughs> Thank you for listening to GCN. Be sure to visit GCNlive.com today. We also have swag. You know, we have all these exclusive PowerCast things that you can buy. We've got like, I guess, 60 or so different items. And entails t-shirts, sleeves for notebook computers, iPad cases, mouse pads, the PowerCast Jumbo tote bag, all sorts of T-shirts and jackets and stuff like that for men and women. We have a Paracast aluminum water bottle. All this stuff, you go to store.thepowercast.com, store.thepowercast.com. What makes it special is that the items are the best quality, you know, great T-shirts, fabrics, and they have our official logo on them. That's what makes them special in multiple sizes and colors. We even have stuff for children. Stuff for women, stuff for men. We have all sorts of sizes, like small up to X large. A lot of good stuff. That's the swag from the PowerCast. If you go to store.thepowercast.com, stop by and take a shopping tour. For years, you've looked for safe solutions to protect what you've worked so hard to build. How do you weather the next market correction with confidence? Now there's a way to conquer the technology hurdle and help protect your profits without buying an annuity in any market condition. Introducing WealthGuard from OnTheMarkMoney.com. WealthGuard lets you know in advance if your accounts are dropping, an early warning system that tracks all your accounts. Get WealthGuard today 100% free. Go to OnTheMarkMoney.com. That's OnTheMarkMoney.com. By now you know that wireless technology like cell phones do in fact pose dangers to the health and privacy of everyone. Blockit Pocket's wide range of products are unmatched in providing the protection you deserve. No scare tactics, just common sense. BlockitPocket.com offers quality American-made options to alleviate and eliminate these invisible dangers. Learn more at BlockitPocket.com or call 888-315-9618. BlockitPocket.com, enhancing health and privacy. As a doctor, I see patients every day who are losing their vision to age-related macular degeneration, also known as AMD. If you have blurry vision or blind spots, they can be symptoms of AMD, and if untreated, could lead to blindness. The good news? AMD can be managed with effective clinically approved treatments that may reverse some vision loss. For free AMD information, contact the Foundation Fighting Blindness at 1-800-BLINDNESS. That's 1-800-BLINDNESS. There is a cure in sight. Hi, Peter Vaccaro for ParanormalDate.com. Are you looking for love in all the wrong places? Now you have a chance to change that by signing up for free at ParanormalDate.com. This incredible dating site puts people of like minds together. 
people who are interested in the strange, the unusual, mysteries, ghosts, UFOs, and the afterlife, and so much more. ParanormalDate.com was developed for you, people seeking a viable alternative to the other dating services. You can join for free by going to ParanormalDate.com, and if you decide you like it and want to connect with people, use the code GEORGE for a substantial discount. Mark Rawlings, president of ParanormalDate.com, says so many people hunger to share their experiences about the paranormal, the unexplainable, or the afterlife, and so much more, and this is the source for them to meet and share that common interest. So sign up for free at ParanormalDate.com, ParanormalDate.com, and use the code GEORGE if you decide to connect with someone you like. There is an affordable alternative to the high cost of health care that offers freedom from insurance while providing compliance with the Obamacare individual mandate. Imagine having access to quality, affordable health care that allows you the freedom to choose your doctor and hospital. Members can share up to 100% of necessary medical expenses, including some alternative treatments. Find out how you and your family can contain health care costs without giving up your freedom. Go to libertyoncall.org. That's libertyoncall.org. Clark, author of the UFO Encyclopedia and other books. You're listening to the Paracast. Chris's voice is starting to take on all sorts of strange frequencies, some of which can't be heard by human ears. We have a second radio show called After the Paracast that we want you to check out. It's part of the Paracast Plus. It's a subscription package that includes After the Paracast, a commercial-free version of this show with better quality audio, audio and video from Paul Kimball's Other Side of Truth, and lots more. And the prices now start as little as $1.49 every week, or $4.99 a month, which I think is the better deal, or five years or a lifetime. To learn more, go to plus, P-L-U-S dot theparacast.com. That's plus dot theparacast.com. Sean Correa is responsible for Anonymous Uprising. And we're talking here about technology and advancement and everything. Let me ask you about, specifically here, about UFOs. Do you think the government is engaged in a conspiracy, any government, to hide the truth about UFOs? I think, well, I know that there's conflicting interests. There's different groups that it's very divided in, in a lot of these big issues relative to what should be uh, um, disclosed to the public, how the information should be disclosed, what what's the next step, because it's not just about coming clean and telling uh, the public that we're aware of this, we've been studying it, we've been engaged in it for several years, there's more to it than that, because after they do that, what's the next step? So I think that there is, you know, Every 10 years, there's more and more consensus towards some kind of compartmentalized disclosure over time to uh, bring, you know, a lot of this forward. Um, I know that because, uh, you know, there are, uh, from a technology perspective, projects I've been a part of, for example, the government spends a lot of money on, on seeing if it can do something with technology. Once they've gotten uh, and realized that they can or something works, how that is used and, and with the applications is an area where there's a lot of debate and a lot of disagreement. Um, you know, in my case, it, the big question is always, should this be, uh, should this be installed or applied as a defense system? Should it be um, uh, weaponized as an uh, offensive based system. Who's going to pay for it? a lot of that? It, there, there's enormous disagreement about that, and that changes, of course, with every uh, new president, every new administration. That that changes. So, as it relates to this subject matter, I think there are scientists that are genuinely trying to solve some of our biggest problems, and uh, this is a uh, you know what they've been able to um, learn from. Uh, extraterrestrials and the technology that they've been able to reverse engineer and work on has certainly been a key contributor to some of these things. The how it should be applied, unfortunately, is is up to someone completely different, and, and there's definitely some disagreement. And most of this is really controlled. People don't recognize or don't understand that a lot of the agencies within the government that work on this stuff are without are without any kind of judicial 
uh, legislative or executive oversight at all. So it doesn't really matter, you know, who's in the White House. It doesn't really matter which party controls uh, the House of Representatives. It doesn't really matter because they don't. Uh, they're basic. They're autonomous. They they have their own own budgets. They have their own agenda, and you know, uh, really don't have any direct oversight from any any branch of government. And a lot of people don't don't realize that. So I, I don't think. Uh, again, I'll go back to there are individuals and there are groups that have you know their own agenda, and sometimes that can be very can be harmful. And it can uh, it it really um, it makes it challenging for the government to remain credible when those things happen. Uh, but I would say overall, this is not a succinct, coordinated um, uh, conspiracy to you know for mass control. I, I just it's just, I've not seen anything that would suggest that. And it's kind of a a lot of the people that have been implicated or have been um, uh, identified to be, you know, responsible for some of those. For example, a number of the CIA is a huge target on its back. The CIA is is been front and center as it relates to this this uh, this topic. And you know, there are a lot of good people um, that work um, in our intelligence agencies that you know are doing good work that kind of get lumped in. And, you know, I don't really think that's fair or really accurate. You mentioned several times, uh, just as a matter of fact, uh, that uh, we're back engineering alien technology. How do you know this? And, and where do, where do you, uh, where, where do you get that information? Well, my personal experience is when we, when project failing started, we were told that we were trying to, create a system that would allow us to bring down um, enemy drones that were, you know, um, you know, flying in U.S. airspace, but to, but doing so without damaging the craft. So we were brought in, our project team was brought a number of different, um, uh, you know, wireless avionic boards to, to work with. And, uh, one of those boards was was made from material using circuitry that I that neither myself or anybody on my team. Again, I'll reiterate, I'm more of a project manager, not a practitioner. Um, so I'm not doing any bench work, but the people that are reported to me as related to this project, and I'm driving strategy and, and the project going forward. But uh, we we've seen boards that we couldn't identify. And, you know, we, of course, have had exposure to, to the latest in wireless avionics and had never seen anything like what they were working with. And the um, the board seemed to interact without any power source, seemed to interact with um, uh, by touch. You, you could touch them and uh, the minimal output that comes, you know, that that is generated from the human body was able to um, enable the. Uh, the board to function, which is, which is remarkable. We hadn't seen that Mo in most cases, depending on what you're working on, that can actually be harmful to the electronics because some of this stuff is really, really sensitive, but that was not the case. So I I've seen, and, and the people that I've worked with um, who knew a little bit more than we did, um, you know, were maybe two tiers above us in terms of the level of compartmentalization of kind of wink, wink, nudge, nudge that, where did this come from? Well, you know, I was told it didn't come from any current uh, 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 adversaries, and um, and just kind of left it at that. But I kind of so you and your team have actually seen uh, some sort of unknown technology uh, in the form of uh, what sort of like circuit boards or something similar to a yes. Central? Yeah, it, it's the, the the avionic system, which effectively controls most of the systems in in the you know their aircraft in, in and, what form do, 
with their with their small you know pathways like on a, a regular circuit board where you have electronic pathways and w- were there parts or was it all just uh, streamlined? Uh, right. Uh, well, there was. Could this, you describe this, it. Uh, how what, it the best I could describe. I don't have a name, but the the circuitry. So what what you know the conductors inside embedded in the boards. It looked like they. Um, it was just this, it wasn't really, uh, um, you know, like fiber optics. It, it was a, this, what I could describe as this crystallized material. Um, uh, it almost looked, I guess the best way to describe it, if you took a, a piece of, you know, transparent fiberglass and you created grooves in that fiberglass and then you put, you know, like glitter, um, really dense, you know, glitter inside those grooves. That's what it looked like, and we've never seen anything like it. Um, so you're assuming here, you then, Sean. It, it you're assuming. The board. I have to cut it short because we're running out of time for this segment. We'll go on to the next segment. You're assuming then that, based on what you're observing and your experience and knowledge, that this is not something that we developed in our own laboratories. It might be something we reverse engineered from perhaps the wreckage of a spacecraft of some sort. And what I'm going to ask you, and perhaps we can start answering that in our next segment, where did that come from? Is that the supposed crash at Roswell, New Mexico? Was it a crash anywhere? Was it aliens exchanging their technology with Earthlings? There are a lot of possibilities here, and it'd be nice to continue to explore them. We have Sean Correa. He is the head of a Anonymous Uprising, which is a project to establish first contact. But as you see, there's a lot more involved and we're trying to trace the background of what he knows and has experienced to understand it still further. With Gene and Chris, you're in The Paracast. Thank you for listening to GCN. Visit GCNlive.com today. Attack of the Rockoids has been well received by critics and readers alike. It's a -a thrill-a-minute story you'll never forget. A former U.S. military intelligence officer is haunted by intense dreams about a beautiful woman pleading for his help after a terrible battle in outer space. But the dreams turn out to be true and thrust him into a telepathic love affair with a woman whose faraway planet is intent on destroying the Earth. And now the gripping tale continues in The Coming of the Protectors. It's the second book of the Rockoids trilogy, a galaxy-spanning adventure that pits our hapless heroes against powerful, fanatical enemies that threaten the lives of freedom-loving beings everywhere. Attack of the Rockoids and The Coming of the Protectors. Classic science fiction at its best. Available now. For more details, visit rockoids.com. That's R O C K O I D S.com. Attention, citizens. This man has received national attention for accurately predicting every major financial trend, including the market crash of 2008. His name is Harry Dent, and in his newly released book, he is making even bigger and bolder predictions that have the potential to devastate the world economy and your personal wealth. You can get a free copy of Harry Dent's bestseller, The Sale of a Lifetime, containing never-before-published information by simply visiting www.saleofalifetime.com forward slash free book. Again, that's saleofalifetime.com forward slash free book. Paid non-attorney spokesperson, Adam Pulaski of the Pulaski Law Firm with principal office in Houston, Texas, is the attorney responsible for the content of this ad. This ad is not legal advice, and the choice of a lawyer should not be based solely upon advertisement. Services may not be available in all states. Attention, Zarelto users. If you or a loved one took Zarelto and suffered a serious bleeding event, you may be entitled to financial compensation. Zarelto is a popular prescription blood thinner used to prevent blood clots and protect patients from strokes. These serious bleeding events have led to numerous cases of hospitalization and even death. Phone lines are open 24-7. Call 800-261-0937. That's 800-261-0937. Welcome back to the Paracast, the gold standard of paranormal radio. And now, here's Gene Steinberg. So, Sean Correa, my question here. You're assuming here that there's no possibility that any of the stuff you've seen, this miraculous technology, could have emerged from our own engineers and scientists without help? 
here's what I can say. I can't say with absolute certainty because there's always a possibility that's not the case. However, I don't see uh, none of my practitioners that were working on this could identify any, have seen any tooling or machining that would have, or any fabrication techniques or technology available uh, that could have manufactured these components and assembled them the way that, that we received them. Number one, it was the only sample that we received that didn't have any source data or schematics that accompanied it. Cause all, everything else we worked on had schematics, had detailed information, had source information. We even have contacts that we could talk to as a reference point uh, to get more information about what we were working on from a technical perspective. And this had none of that. And you kind of put all those pieces together None of that is a written certified confirmation of sorts per se, but as a betting man, I would, I, I feel that what we've concluded was on the, on the probable side, highly probable side. Where do you think it came from? Roswell crash where? I don't know. I don't, I have no idea because Roswell may have been the first of hundreds of craft we've retrieved it's hard to say i i, I doubt it I'm, I'm i probably would say that it was within the last 15 years uh, the only reason i say that is because it just uh knowing the i guess the life cycle of you know when material is recovered and is given to a team to um to catalog and then given to another team to try to get to get it to, to work, to better understand it, and then give it to a team to reverse engineer it. That life cycle at best is, you know, five years. Um, so I, I doubt they would be given us material that was that old. And I'm certain that we, we don't know for sure. I don't think any of us know when the first time our government officially got involved in, in studying this phenomena. But I would imagine that <laughs> Once they started, they didn't stop or reduce their efforts, so they probably uh, wanted to and tried to seek out ways to continue to retrieve technology and better understand and get closer to this. I mean, um, so my best guess, I think, just you know, based on logic, based on my own experience on on how this stuff works and how this stuff gets disseminated through the various departments to to, to analyze and to uh, to repurpose. I, I doubt that it was, we were given something from the 40s. Yeah, but look at it this way, too. Say in the 1940s, someone brought to them an iPhone. It's 1940. Someone brings an iPhone to them. Could they reverse engineer that? Could they even figure out what it is? I mean, there's certain basics they might understand, like it has a battery, and maybe if they could still turn it on, they could see that this is some kind of monitor or display because we were in the earlier stages of inventing TV. That might make sense. But now take an invention that's a thousand years ahead of us that powers a spacecraft from one star system to another, whatever it is. Do you really think we could reverse engineer any of it? Oh, yes. I do. I do. Maybe not all of it, but I... God, there's some really smart people that do this stuff. And I'm absolutely certain that they can put unlimited resources to trying to figure out what it is, how it works, where it came from. And I mean, you can put that kind of brain power and those kinds of resources behind something like this. Um, you know, you're going to, you're going to have, get some answers to those questions. You're going to be able to, come up with some conclusions you may not be able to uh figure it all out but but i'm i'm certain they're very very good at at doing this stuff when we um uh, when when we recover um you know prototype systems weapon systems weapons aircraft um surveillance equipment new you know um you know, cyber uh, technology for, you know, uh, listening and intrusion, the process by which that's collected, cataloged, um, uh, you know, reverse engineered, replicated, 
and, and, and put back in the, I mean, it, it's, it's pretty quick. I mean, I would say the timeline that I've observed in those instances, and I recognize that we're not talking about technology that's a thousand years ahead of us. However, they're pretty good at, at, at and very efficient at moving that stuff through the system and uh, making some use out of it. And, and they've got, you know, access to, uh, I mean, the brightest minds in the world. I mean, it's just a matter of a phone call and they've got massive budgets. I mean, they, you'd be surprised what they are capable of doing. And generally speaking, you got to remember that whatever the military, um, our military uh, space command, uh, the technology that they have is 30, 40 years ahead of, you know, what's available in the commercial and private sector. So uh, you've got to try to imagine it from that perspective to, to, to get even – to begin to understand their capabilities and what they can do. But they're, they're very good, and they, they learn. And I'm sure that every craft piece of technology, every, every recovery made, they've learned something that they've been able to then take and implement the next go-around. You know, like I mentioned to you, one of their objectives was to try to collect this stuff without – causing any damage and that was one of the things they're trying to do um, there's so I, I just have no doubt that they they had the resources to to do this work and do do a good job at it well you're very confident that we could take apart alien technology all right so let me I ask am. you a question here if we already know all this we've disassembled some level of alien technology the government clearly knows so many things. Why bother with first contact? Why not try to find a way to get them to disclose what they know? Because I think it's not that it's a dangerous game. It's just it would be uh, it would be really challenging. You don't you don't have the leverage. No one's going to. No one who controls the the strategy is going to come forward and and blow the whistle most of your whistleblowers or defectors as i like to call them um they were you know compartmentalized they can only give you one you know sliver of what is true they can't give you the whole piece so it, it, it's just not it was just too challenging and the other thing is i i uh to be honest with you i'm very curious myself I don't want to wait for someone else to interpret what this is. Um, if this, if we evolve to the point where we're, there's some kind of coexistence or the reality of this um, changes everything, changes our perspective, our worldview, our way of life going forward, I'd like to have some <laughs> say in in my future for my family for people i know i think that you know i don't see you know anything the government has done on its own without um the consent or without the collaboration with its citizens is 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 a you know doomed for failure in my view and and i i just think that we need someone outside of the the government to um take the first steps and to develop the framework for diplomacy. Um, you know, at least that's how I feel about it personally. Well, you know, there's and an obvious think, question that I'd like to ask and we could have your response in our next segment, which is, okay, if the government knows all this stuff, what makes you think they won't find ways to stop you from trying to mount an independent effort at first contact? We'll have more from Sean Correa of Anonymous Uprising. With Gene and Chris, you're in... The Paracast. <laughs> Neighbors, I want to tell you about my favorite graphics app. It's the award-winning Graphic Converter. You know, Graphic Converter is the universal genius for photo editing on your Mac. Join over one and a half million loyal users for this Swiss Army Knife photo editing app. It gives you all you expect from a top flight image editing app with tons of features. And most important, it's easy to use. It's also far less expensive than that other app that you can only get by subscription. You know, the one I'm talking about. 
What's more, you can get 20% off with your order right now. So write this down to learn about Graphic Converter. Go to www.lemkesoft.de slash gene. Let me spell that. www.lemkesoft.de slash gene. We all know that Berkey Water Purification Systems are the most trusted name in water filtration. As an authorized Berkey dealer for over six years and serving thousands of satisfied customers, the Berkey Guy offers amazing specials for Berkey Water Filtration Systems. The Berkey Light Systems include a set of self-sterilizing and recleanable black purification elements that purify water by removing chlorine, pathogenic bacteria, cysts and parasites to non-detectable levels and remove harmful chemicals such as herbicides and pesticides. Order the Berkey Light System system today complete with two black Berkey elements for only $231 and the Berkey guy will ship your order free of charge. With the purchase of a Berkey light, the Berkey guy is also offering a set of fluoride and arsenic filters for only $39.99. That's over 30% off the retail price. Call the Berkey guy at 1-877-886-3653. That's 1-877-886-3653 or order online at goberkey.com. That's goberkey.com today. If you or someone you care about loves outdoor adventure, then check out slingbow.com for some unique holiday gift ideas. That's slingbow.com, where we have some innovative new products for the archer, hunter, or bow fishing enthusiast in your family. Now through January, use the promo code HOLIDAY to get free shipping in the U.S. or Canada. And from all of us at Slingbow Industries, have a safe, joyous, and peaceful holiday season. Hi, Peter Vaccaro for ParanormalDate.com. Are you looking for love in all the wrong places? Now you have a chance to change that by signing up for free at ParanormalDate.com. This incredible dating site puts people of like minds together. People who are interested in the strange, the unusual, mysteries, ghosts, UFOs, and the afterlife, and so much more. ParanormalDate.com was developed for you, people seeking a viable alternative to the other dating services. You can join for free by going to ParanormalDate.com. And if you decide you like it and want to connect with people, use the code GEORGE for a substantial discount. Mark Rawlings, president of ParanormalDate.com, says so many people hunger to share their experiences about the paranormal, the unexplainable, or the afterlife, and so much more. And this is the source for them to meet and share that common interest. So sign up for free at ParanormalDate.com. ParanormalDate.com and use the code GEORGE if you decide to connect with someone you like. Hi, this is Ted Anderson. I'm here to tell you about GCNTelecare.com, a team of board-certified doctors assisting you 24 hours a day, 7 days a week, 365 days a year. Within 15 minutes of registration, care your family can afford. Revolutionizing the healthcare industry, virtual consulting, providing diagnosis of non-emergency medical issues by phone or secure video on computer or smart mobile devices. GCNTelecare.com. Virtual care anywhere. We'd like to hear from you. If you have a comment or question about the Paracast, send it to news at theparacast.com. That's news at theparacast.com. And don't forget to visit our famous Paracast community forums at forum.theparacast.com. Back with Sean Correa of Anonymous Uprising. So the question I asked you, and we're going to get more into how people can get involved in this if they really wanted to contribute their funds. And that is, what makes you think the government won't stop you if you're trying to do this, if there's any chance for success? Well, as long, I believe, if, we're, if we conduct ourselves professionally and we're responsible, I don't think we're a threat to national security, uh, number one. A lot of the, and, and, and the government intervention in, in this realm is another thing that's been grossly exaggerated. And, and I think Hollywood has had a, has contributed a, a lot there and, and to be more pragmatic to give you the more practical answer. I own a private military contractor with about 300 of the best trained special operators. So when it comes to security, uh, to discretion, to preventing external intervention. And I mean, we, we pretty much have the playbook. 
So we, we're, we feel pretty confident from a security perspective, uh, but we're not going to try to do anything to provoke a response that uh, would be dangerous or could potentially shut us down. We're going to try to operate in a professional way, in a way that doesn't present a threat to national security and is as inclusive as you could possibly be. And that's the idea. We're not trying to shut out um, willing contributors uh, from the from the government, what we call our white hat partners. Um, you know, this is an inclusive process. Um, so, uh, if they're if we're successful, um, and we've maybe achieved a milestone that uh, the government hasn't been able to do uh, for whatever reason, uh, there might be an opportunity for some collaboration. I don't know. But it's not something that, to be honest with you, I worry about. People don't just make contact and, you know, there's a wet team on standby ready to neutralize you because, you know, you, you've started to uh, work on this. Day. It's just that's just not true. I mean, it takes a lot of paperwork to kill somebody. <laughs> you have to be an eminent threat, not a possible threat, but an eminent threat to national security for uh, for something like that to be green lighted. It's just not as easy or as fantastic as Hollywood and the internet would have you believe in my view. But I'm not assuming it's going to be someone trying to off you, to disappear you. Don't you think interference could be right. done in more subtle ways to disrupt your financial flow? Well, that's that's possible if that's a possibility. Like I said, I'm not going to spread anti-government sentiment. That's not what we're trying to do. Typically, the government would try, you know, like anything else, the path of least resistance. If you're doing something that, that bears fruit and that is useful, the first thing they'll try to do is work with you, is to try to fund you, to, you know, uh, bring you into the fold and make you a contributor to a larger body of research, which I think would be fantastic. Um, the conditions of that collaboration might be problematic to an extent. For instance, if it's, you know, if we can't tell anybody if the, if, if the intention of, of what we're doing is nefarious in any way, um, that's something I would opt out of. I'll give you a perfect example. So my company provides security as a lot of the contractors do that you've seen on TV, but we, we choose the clients and the situations that we're willing to, to get involved in. And for example, um, you may or may not have been following the protests in North Dakota with the pipeline. Yes, definitely. But those are the types of, those are the types of security contracts we don't do. We don't do stuff like that. That's just not kind of crosses the line that we're not willing to, you know, cross morally. So the same thing would apply here. The next thing is if you are, you're a threat to national security or the work you're doing poses a risk to the, the health and well-being and safety of the public, they will, you know, that's when they get the EPA involved to get you locked up in court or they get, you know, uh, looks like the IRS, I mean, there's a number of ways they can try to be disruptive to try to either interrupt or drain your resources, your ability to do that. Another good reason to make sure that you're, your sources of revenue are not directly affiliated with the work you're doing, you know, because that makes it easy for them to disrupt revenue. So, um, so that's another, another thing they can do and, and then get it or they can just slap a national security award. I mean, there's a lot of ways they can do to disrupt you, but it, the first, if you're doing something good, um, and, and you, and when I mean good, I don't mean morally. I mean, if you're doing good work, it's, and it's bearing fruit and you're, you know, making progress, they, uh, they want to participate before they, you know, want to shut you down. Um, at least that's been my experience because, you know, when it comes to weapon systems and a number of different technologies, I've been part of that. I mean, the, the process isn't different just because it's, uh, we're talking about extraterrestrial technology. If you're developing a weapon system or, um, some kind of, uh, a cyber, um, technology, uh, you know, they, they want to partner with you. That's, that's what they try to do. Um, hopefully that answers that question. Uh, just a background question here. You're head of a group called Phalanx Security Group. Now, is this, exactly. is this something that you can find online, get more information about? We're going, we're actually in the process of building a website um, now. 
we we've never had one um never really needed one because for the most part our uh we had a very select client list uh, the u.s government and um some corporations and you know a couple of private individuals uh, so you had a haven't really needed to market ourselves in the traditional way, but we are going to build a website more to be, you know, be more informative uh, than anything for people that are curious about what we do. Okay. So right now we really can't look online and see what you do. No, basically what we do, we provide executive protection. You know, we protect, um, we're hired for, uh, to protect installations uh, abroad. Um, we do uh, some domestic, um, you know, patrol security services here um, that involves sophisticated CCTV and facial recognition technology. So, uh, you know, we provide a, and we also uh, provide uh, cyber security services. So we're just a, uh, you know, a um, security shop. Just checking. Okay, let's, let's go more in our final segments here into your plans here. You're raising a million dollars. And I guess people want to know roughly how that's going to be spent. But the first part of the question is, are you going to attempt to establish a system to detect UFO activity? And the reason I raise that is because on the Paracast over the past year or so, we have talked to a couple of people who want to set up a network of UFO detection systems. One of them is going to put a satellite into low Earth orbit which is going to be, I think, less possible than finding the needle in the haystack. But I'd like to find out what you plan to do with regard to finding the activity so you can try to communicate with whoever or whatever these things are. We have sure. Sean Korea with Gene and Chris. You're in the Paracast. <laughs> Thank you for listening to GCN. Visit GCNlive.com today. Attention citizens, this man has received national attention for accurately predicting every major financial trend, including the market crash of 2008. His name is Harry Dent, and in his newly released book, he is making even bigger and bolder predictions that have the potential to devastate the world economy and your personal wealth. You can get a free copy of Harry Dent's bestseller, The Sale of a Lifetime, containing never-before-published information by simply visiting www.saleofalifetime.com forward slash free book. Again, that's saleofalifetime.com forward slash free book. This is Ben Gordon, and if your teeth are stained from coffee, tea, or smoking, Power Swabs is the answer. In five minutes, you'll see two shades whiter teeth, and in seven days, six shades. There's no messy strips or trays that you have to leave in your mouth for an hour. Just swab your teeth for five minutes, and you're done. To try Power Swabs, call 1-800-290-8480. Your bright white smile will have your friends talking about how great you look. Try it risk-free. 1-800-290-8480. That's 1-800-290-8480. Hi, this is Dr. Joel Wallach, the Mineral Doctor. You've heard me talk about 90 for Life for years. 60 minerals, 16 vitamins, 12 amino acids, 2 fatty acids. You may not know this, that I've actually designed Arthur decks for animals. That's right. Your pets need 90 for Life, too. Get this essential pet product by calling 877-279-9422. That's 877-279-9422. Again, 877-279-9422. Are you one of the 70% of Americans that want to own your own business, afraid to leave the security of your current job to pursue your dreams? I'm Pharmacist Keith. Dr. Wallach, the Dead Doctors Don't Lie guy, and myself want to show you a low-cost way to create your own business, working around your current job schedule, creating an extra income for you and your family by joining his crusade, spreading his message of better health. To learn more, visit radio.recordedvideo.com, radio.recordedvideo.com. That's radio.recordedvideo.com.
Offer not valid in all states or where prohibited by law. See website for details. Need some extra cash today? Do you have bad credit or maxed out credit cards? If so, turn your radio up. 45cash.com is one of the nation's largest personal loan networks with over 50 different lenders. Now you can get a personal loan for up to $5,000 with any type of credit discreetly from your computer or smartphone and with no paperwork to send in. That's right, no paperwork whatsoever. Your cash will hit your bank account as soon as tomorrow as our lenders have millions of dollars to lend regardless of your credit history. Visit 45cash.com and you can have up to $5,000 in no time. Just have a checking account and a regular source of income and you can get the loan you need now, regardless of your credit. Go to 45cash.com from your smartphone or computer to get the cash you need. Visit 45cash.com. Type www.45cash.com directly into the address bar. That's 45cash.com. 45cash.com. Are you worried about your mom or dad living alone in their house? Hi, I'm Joan London. Listen, I know how difficult it is to find senior care for someone you love. That's why I recommend a free service called A Place for Mom. They are the nation's largest senior living referral service. Call A Place for Mom today. To receive free information on senior living communities in your area, call A Place for Mom at 1-800-704-6182. A Place for Mom offers free, one-on-one advice from local advisors and a personalized list of senior living communities you can visit. If you have questions about senior care for your mom or dad, there's a place for answers, a place for mom. Call A Place for Mom in the next 10 minutes to get your free ebook on financing senior care as well as free information on senior living communities in your area. Call 1-800-704-6182. That's 1-800-704-6182. This is Micah Hanks of the Grayley Report, and you're listening to the Paracast, the gold standard of paranormal radio. The question on the table here, where do the million dollars, what's it earmarked for? This million dollars you want to raise with GoFundMe. Are you going to try to set up a network of UFO detection systems to know where to go? No, we're a large portion of the money is going to be spent to build that data aggregation and analysis um, platform that we're going to put online. So all of our numbers and and you know we're going to when we develop our protocols, we'll be able to um, and if we're successful, at least with where our initial attempt is, we're going to make that available to the public. We want to try to get as many people in as many different locations, and we'll show them how to how to pick a site, you know, what kind of equipment and tools we'll need and, and how to go about doing this themselves. But we want to try to get as much data, raw data fed into this system for analysis and for modeling, which will give us uh, information on the sites, um, the hot, you know, what are the best results and what kind of sites, what were the characteristics of that site? For example, you know, there's certain energy um uh, deposits in certain parts of the earth, there's, you know, electromagnetism, there's all kinds of different naturally occurring anomalies that seem to be hotbeds. And we want to try to figure out where those are, which ones are the hottest and why. So we've got, we're obviously in order to, to figure that out, we need to try a number of different things. The best and most practical way to do that is to get people who are interested and have the the aptitude as well as the desire to go out and be an extension and do this work in remote areas. A lot of this work's already um, been done. You know, you're talking to somebody who's been working on this particular aspect of your project for years, and I'm in the midst of putting together a uh, a triangulated, uh, you know, multi-instrumented surveillance setup in one of the uh, premier UFO hotspots in North America. Just one thing you should know about me up front, I'm a primary research guy, not a secondary, so... I, I've seen and observed and read, and a lot of people have done a lot of different things, and a lot of it seems good, but I kind of want to start from scratch so we don't miss anything. And, and you know, I don't want to take any shortcuts. So a lot of the things that you've, uh, you've learned in your experience, we'll probably uh, pick that up. And that, again, that's the whole idea is to make this a very inclusive process because we're going to, I'm sure, going to meet people 
um, who have experiences they can contribute that will help us move along a little faster. We don't have all the answers, but we are nobody that is involved um, at this point in the organization is a seasoned, um, you know, has a seasoned geophology background at all. Um, so, uh, you know, from, uh, we're really kind of starting from scratch and I, and I, in, in the past, and I'm well, not trying I mean, to look say at that this is like you look at areas of high incidence. You look at what your chances are of of actually capturing some sort of real time event based on uh, the databases that have been slowly being accumulated over decades. Uh, there are places in North America where you have a much higher chance percentage wise of, of having an unusual occurrence and in in the case yeah. of the San Luis Valley where I was there's more sightings per 10,000 population than uh, I think there's one other spot that's comparable and that would be in North Dakota because there's so few people but for every 10,000 yeah. you know a population there are 257 uh, or 274 I forget um, ufological events uh, the next nearest being, uh, I think, 50-something uh, per t- uh, 10,000 uh, 10, uh, population. So, you know, I well, mean, there are first... ways to ID uh, spots that do have a, a history and a preponderance of, uh, of sighting activity. Well, we're our, uh, just, and this was kind of, I found this to be kind of interesting, but, you know, some of the, the first six expeditions we'll do, we are planning to do on a few uh, different Indian reservations. Yeah. They're pretty isolated. They're pretty isolated. Mil- uh, you know, uh, some of the most secret military installations are actually on, on Indian reservations for obvious reasons. Um, they can operate with almost absolute autonomy. The civilian population on Indian reservation is not really interested in engaging with the outside world too much. So um, they don't have to worry about that. And so we found that to be and a really good source of information um, from my experience is uh, from a historical perspective without a, um, uh, you know, any kind of religious um, taint, tainting, if you will, uh, residents on Indian reservations have a lot of great information as it relates to this activity um, yeah. that doesn't make it into the mainstream, i found. So, uh, that's one of the interesting locations we're going to start where we'll have very little interference. Uh, we'll have, you know, uh, all the elements we would look for or exist and are really optimal. And if we can, uh, you know, if we can have a measure of success initially in that kind of arena, that, that would be something that can be uh, uh, replicated on a large scale around the world, I would imagine. So, but to answer your first question, a lot of the money is going to be spent to develop that platform because that's going to be really how we aggregate, analyze, and model the data coming in from all over the place. The other aspect is we are going to develop, we have a, a partner who um, it was a, uh, a former uh, arms dealer and uh, was a very successful contractor for maritime security who is now on the board of a, an, a specialized optics company. And we're trying, we would like to uh, be able to observe, um, uh, you know, these um, craft, um, you know, up close using specialized optics. So we're uh, going to uh, purchase a system uh, kind of like a, a telescope, um, but a little bit different. It has, it it can effectively record um, a, a whole array of uh, different spectrums of light, um, and and we can we can use in one through one uh, view we can see things in different spectrums of light, which picks up details that you miss. Yeah, it's called um, called the blaze grading. It's an attachment exactly. that goes so, on to an optical analog optical. Instru- optical instrument uh, called a blaze grating. It separates light into spectra. Exactly. So we can record that information, and and so we're uh, we're having uh, a uh, device created so that we can use that that has some uh, customized features. Um, so that that's you know a pretty costly endeavor. But the rest of it, in terms of 
uh, our operations costs for the expeditions. We're we would love and are uh, trying to encourage people who are interested in going on expeditions with us to help us out. Um, uh, you know, wide open uh, for that. We're trying to invite as many people to participate as possible. Um, but most of the operational costs we're going to um, we're going to pay for ourselves. Uh, we just need this platform and um, uh, some of our equipment that we're going to need out in the field. And that's it. Um, once we've been able to acquire those things and concluded our initial and all, everything that we do is going to be uh, recorded the raw data. And this is probably one of the, if I had to say a differentiator, which I wish more people would do, I personally would be interested in looking at more raw data than um, the edited data. And, and you know, that, that has someone else's ideas about what this means, but we're going to provide all the raw data as we record it is going to be available for people to, to view, to look at, to go through themselves. Um, so we have a, uh, we're going to be purchasing a lot of, uh, you know, I don't want to say GoPro, but we're going to use kind of a GoPro method of recording our activities. Um, not to say we're going to use specifically GoPro <laughs> cameras, but you get the idea so that we can, um, so we capture everything. Um, and so that the public can, can benefit from that. I'm going to ask you more questions about this. And so will Chris in the final segment of our session with, Sean Correa of Anonymous Uprising with Gene and Chris. You're in the Paracast. You are listening to GCN. Visit GCNlive.com today. We also have swag. You know, we have all these exclusive Paracast things that you can buy. We've got like, I guess, 60 or so different items and entails T-shirts, sleeves for notebook computers, iPad cases, mouse pads, the Paracast Jumbo tote bag, all sorts of T-shirts and jackets and stuff like that for men and women. We have a Paracast aluminum water bottle. All this stuff, you go to store.theparacast.com, store.theparacast.com. What makes it special is that the items are the best quality, you know, great T-shirts, fabrics, and they have our official logo on them. That's what makes them special in multiple sizes and colors. We even have stuff for children, stuff for women, stuff for men. We have all sorts of sizes, like small up to X large. A lot of good stuff. That's the swag from the Paracast. If you go to store.theparacast.com, stop by and take a shopping tour. Don't know what contaminants are lurking in your water? Time to get a ProPure. Take advantage of ProPure's holiday sale. Save 25% on all ProPure water filter products. Sales good through December 31st. There's a ProPure water filter for you. Visit your authorized ProPure dealer for details or ProPureUSA.com. That's P-R-O-P-U-R-U-S-A.com. Did you know your car can be hacked just like your computer or phone? Hackers can hijack the signal of your own key fob to burglarize your vehicle in seconds. The Black Hole Faraday Key Fob Bag is a signal and penetrable shield that stops these hacks in their tracks. Protect one of your most valuable assets. Go to HackProofBag.com. That's HackProofBag.com. And use promo code RADIO to get 20% off. Or call 805-222-4584. 805-222-4584. You've been hearing Dr. Wallach talking about 90 essential nutrients, keeping the body healthy. GCNteam.com now has Beyond Tangy Tangerine tablets, 60 plant-derived minerals, 16 vitamins, 12 amino acids, packed in a powerful tablet. But that's not it. 160,000 auric points, a knockout punch to free radicals. Call 877-878-4203 or go to GCNteam.com. That's 877-878-4203. The following is an incredible, life-changing, free offer for anyone with hearing problems who wants to start hearing more clearly again. We're now offering free in-home trials of a revolutionary hearing breakthrough called Listen Clear to anyone who calls this special toll-free number now, 1-800-719-4926. Call now and you'll also qualify for free shipping. 
Listen Clear is precisely designed by top audio engineers. It adjusts to let you find the perfect way to hear things crisply and clearly, wherever you are and whatever you're doing. And Listen Clear is so small and discreet, people usually don't even notice you're wearing it. And it's so lightweight, you may even forget you're wearing it too. Don't miss this special life-changing opportunity to hear things more clearly again for free with a 100% free in-home trial and free shipping. If you like it, you could even get free batteries for life. For free information, call now. 1-800-719-4926. That's 1-800-719-4926. 1-800-719-4926. Paid non-attorney spokesperson Adam Pulaski of the Pulaski Law Firm with principal office in Houston, Texas is the attorney responsible for the content of this ad. This ad is not legal advice and the choice of a lawyer should not be based solely upon advertisement. Services may not be available in all states. Attention Zarelto you. If you or a loved one took Zorelto and suffered a serious bleeding event, you may be entitled to financial compensation. Zorelto is a popular prescription blood thinner used to prevent blood clots and protect patients from strokes. These serious bleeding events have led to numerous cases of hospitalization and even death. Phone lines are open 24-7. Call 800-261-0937. That's 800-261-0937. This is Jacques Vallée, and you're listening to the Paracast, the gold standard of paranormal radio. Sean, can you tell us, do you actually have a specific detailed cost breakdown, a business plan that people can get a hold of? We do. We were, you know, this is a little bit different endeavor than uh, any of us have ever been a part of before. So we wanted to provide that to people sort of on a individual, on a case-by-case basis as they required that information. Uh, there we were kind of a split on whether it would be smart to just make it available to the public. I was one that kind of voted for it because it's pretty straightforward and, you know, there's nothing in there that's too, you don't have any particular trade secrets. I mean, it's pretty, pretty open. So I wouldn't have a problem with it. I think the the issue would be is there's certain companies, vendors and sources and, and stuff that don't, that are providing resources that don't want to be mentioned, but I don't think anybody really cares who they are. So I'm sure we could come up with a, the version that is, you know, not going to affect our project that, that the public can look at. Yeah, but the reason I'm mentioning that is you've got a GoFundMe campaign here seeking $1 million, and maybe trivial for people to give $10, $100, whatever. But if someone really wants to put a lot of money into this, and you're going to need lots of people to participate, they're going to insist on a business plan, a breakdown. What are you going to do with this money? Where is it? Well, that's a good point. When we initially did this campaign, you know, I'm, I'm used to going after more traditional sources of capital, right? Venture capitalists, angel investors, institutional investors, et cetera. Uh, in this case, because like you've said, the average donation is between 20 to a hundred dollars. That level of detail would be so much that it would overwhelm people and that just, they would, uh, they would lose interest because a lot of the, but to your point, it, it, and we thought if somebody really wanted to get involved and have the resources to you know, make a, a sizable investment and they wanted to, you know, access to that information. That was kind of, you know, well, we have it available if they want it. So, but to your point, you think that uh, you're making the point that we should just put it out there for the public, just for everybody and anybody to read it is what you're suggesting. Well, I think it has to be available for people to want to know more. You don't necessarily have to have the full business plan, except if someone is more seriously interested, but something. I mean, right now, from what I see in your GoFundMe campaign, is just a few paragraphs of very general information, kind of like what you yep. get if you put in $100, but it doesn't explain all the purposes of this money. I think you could have write a one-page business plan that roughly describes where this is going and not for the salaries of the people participating. Exactly. Good point. We'll, uh, we'll put something together and, and publish it. I, I appreciate that to the suggestion. Again, a lot of this stuff is new to us. We're not sure, we're not sure, uh, you know, how people are going to respond, what, you know, what, what the level of interest, you know, a lot of this is just uncharted territories. You know, we're certainly open to ideas and, and I think that's a, that makes a lot of sense. You make a good point. Right. But didn't you consult so, with accountants or business people as to how to raise capital? No, no. Well, we're not, none of the money we raise is going towards 
traditional operating costs or anybody's salary uh, or anything like that. It's it's really we just need we need to develop this platform and we need some equipment and that's really it. Everything else is coming out of other funding sources. Uh, it's a million so, dollars, man. It's a million dollars. Just to, what kind of equipment do you need for a million dollars? Well, this stuff's not cheap. <laughs> Well, the biggest, the most expensive part is the uh, the analytics system. It's going to be it's extraordinarily expensive. Commercial analytics platforms cost between four hundred and eighty to six hundred and some odd thousand dollars. We're building this one from scratch, uh, you know, because all the algorithms have to be custom. Uh, there isn't, you know, there isn't uh, a pre-scripted set of algorithms we could use that would really be a good fit for the kinds of data that we're collecting. So, this has all got to be built. Uh, it's all custom. You know, it's not uh, it's not cheap. Sean, Sean, we're running out of time. I need to we have maybe four minutes left to talk about this. I want to be really quick about this. All right. All right. So sure. it's, you're talking about four hundred, five hundred thousand dollars for this analytics platform. That could be put in a single sheet of paper. Here's what the money will go for. And you can stick it on your GoFundMe campaign. Analytics platform, this, that, the other thing. Personnel, programmers, all that can be spelled out. And I think if you spelled it out, you'd get a lot more action than you're getting now. You're just raised, as we talk, a few hundred dollars. And you want to raise a million, you're going to have to reach a very, very high threshold to get to that point. And in in order to do that, in order to do that, you're going to have to provide some more information. This is really general. And it's not there. I have to ask you this information. It should have been there already, if you understand now, no, I do. I do understand what you're saying. I think it's a good point, and we can we can put something together and, and make it available. So, again, uh, you know, we there is a debate in launching a you know a crowdfunding campaign. What degree of specificity? What kind of detail would people is consumable? You know, the the general rule of marketing is you don't typically want to bombard people with data necessarily. You want to teaspoon it, and and one of the key messages if you go to the the page is I left my, my email address, my contact information, and welcomed anybody who wanted to talk to me, had other questions, or just wanted to talk and reach out. I'm, I'm available to answer those questions. But we, there was a debate as to too much data. Um, you, you know, you, you, your message get, can get buried. Um, and, and, you know, so we wanted a teaspoon and give them just enough information to kind of get a sense. But you're, you make a valid point. I guess if people are curious about, about that, and I've looked at a number of different similar campaigns and tried to study that and kind of get a sense for, you know, what kind of information was made available. And uh, that, that's kind of how we got here. So I'm not opposed to what you're suggesting. I think it's a valid point and it's something that we will address here in the near term. And, and you know, hopefully that does help people to get a better understanding and, you know, prove the uh, response going forward. So I, I get it. I agree. Makes sense. We'll do it. Okay. I will look forward to seeing it. We have not dealt much with your personal experiences because, frankly, we wanted to focus more on what got you to this point and what you hope to yep. accomplish with Anonymous Uprising. So, certainly, we hope to see more developments. But remember, too, that every day that you have a campaign at GoFundMe where you're not providing enough information, potential donors are going to be turned off. And they'll look elsewhere. They'll look to the people who maybe need to raise money for an operation or have some other emergency. So that's another issue yep. to consider. And I'm not an expert on GoFundMe campaigns, but I've done a little bit of it and I can see where the obstacles might be. So those of our listeners who want to know more about what Anonymous Uprising is, is there any place they can check it out? Right now, just our, if they go, uh, you know, right now it's just, our GoFundMe page. And as soon as we launch, we're going to develop a website and, uh, you know, basically facilitate up to where we can facilitate updates and communicate with the public. Um, But all the updates and information is on our, uh, if you go to anonymousuprising.com, it'll take you to our GoFundMe page. We're going to be putting some updates here today or tomorrow, um, adding information. So it's all there. You can find us on Twitter. If you look for the PowerCast, search for the PowerCast on Twitter. We also have a presence on Facebook. 
Look for the Paracast Fan Club on Facebook. There are two of them. We also have the Paracast.com. And if you go there, you'll find lots of information about what we are and what we do and about all the hundreds of shows that we have available. We're also available on nearly 30 radio stations on the GCN network. And then we have the Paracast Plus. The Paracast Plus is a subscription service where we offer the After the Paracast podcast, where Chris and I will have a lot more to say about the Anonymous Uprising venture. You also will get the ad-free version of this show without the network commercials, like 41 minutes of those removed. We give you extra audio and video content from Paul Kimball's Other Side of Truth. There's a lot more there. And we have a new special for the new year as we start 2017. You can get a subscription to the Paracast Plus for $1.49 a week. It's going to be a recurring payment, $4.99 a month. We also have plans for five years and a lifetime. And this show has been here for 10 years so far, 10 and a half years, actually. And we'll be here for an awful long time. For more information, go to plus.theparacast.com. That's plus.theparacast.com with all the sign-up information you need. Sean Correa of Anonymous Uprising, thank you for joining us on the Paracast. Thank you. The Paracast, featuring Gene Steinberg and Christopher O'Brien, is a copyrighted presentation of Making the Impossible Incorporated. Tune in next week for a new adventure in The Paracast. <laughs>